to progress. So, this is where we are going to go. Let's get this rolling. Romanji? I don't think it's Romanji. My greetings, Life Anomaly. Hope you're doing well. Hope you all are doing well, guys. So, it's fine. I'll be mostly looking while I draw. Nice. Hope you enjoy your drawing. And good luck with that. I'm not sure luck is much of a factor. It could be. Maybe just have the right idea for the right... ...broke. I don't know which tools to use, but... ...hope it turns out well. And greetings, Tony Mi Michaels. Aaron, how's it going? So, alrighty. As a small introduction, this is going to be a solo boy challenge, which means I will only be using uh, the boy for virtually anything. And the goal is that both the other characters, the sprite and the girl, are staying at the lowest level possible, without them increasing in level in any capacity. So, for me to achieve that... I will just have them, well, dead for most of the run. But it also means I am quite limited in which beneficial glitches I can use to aid me on my quest. I will still be using the money glitch, I will be using the equipment trashing and all that good stuff, and also the early mana sword. But various things like skips, which, well, I guess doesn't really matter too much in this case, and other things like... What else do we have? Overcharge glitch? That is not going to be a thing. I will be leveling up weapons, I will be switching out weapons, upgrading weapons, just so I will deal sufficient damage. I will be doing some trickery to survive boss attacks, which is actually kind of difficult at times. Or more specifically, I need to mash well enough to open the menu in time. Literally. From memory, Romaji is the term for words in Japanese derived from other languages, while Hiragana, Katakana and Kanji are other parts of the language, alphabets and slightly more complex pieces of language. Oh really? I thought it was either... Katakana or Kanji. That does... I know a few letters from one of the two, which are basically just piecing together words, like a holy bottle is a hori bodoru, stuff like that. So, early on I will be killing some enemies here, I want to level up the sword to level 1. Kind of similar to 1 player 2 controller even, I will also want to level up the spear as I go. Because the spear is going to be one of my mainstay weapons for quite some time to come. Since it has a really nice upgrade path and a really really useful effect on one of the levels. So I will be aiming to do that. That is going to be 6. 7. 8. And there we go. Hanakana is usually used for foreign words. Ah, that way. Done. It should... I just drew this for a friend. I don't know if I can post a link or not. You can post a link if you'd like. Just a picture of one of the women I did for a friend. Sure, go ahead. Why not? I'm curious about art. I actually really like... watching or looking at art. Some times more than others, just because it seems to strike a specific chord, short, chord, whatever. But overall, I kind of enjoy the sharing, and hey, look at this, this looks awesome, why not? I think most words in the Romaji are written in Katakana, though I think proper nouns are usually also written in Katakana, based on my old memory. I see. Alrighty. Also, I forgot to...
save. I should have saved here in the first village to be able to get the mana sword early quicker. That would have been a reasonable choice, but I forgot. That's okay. Let's see. Interesting. Thank you for the link. That's a really interesting style, actually. I don't think I've seen that before. How do you create that, if I may ask? I don't like it. I shall just do the digital dimension link. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. Good afternoon, Gamji. How are you doing, sir? Good afternoon. And greetings, Black Death Doom. How are you doing? Low damage roll. That's not nice. Okay. Not the low damage roll. That's less than I do. Should not. Oh, it spawned anyways. Never mind then. That's okay. Hey! <laughs> For some reason I thought I didn't have weapons in this area. I do. But pull the butts. Oopsie. Chilling at work. Nice. Hope we are not too, not too distracting here. My vacuum tablet. <laughs> the nostalgia from this game. Hey Sputnik and welcome. Yes. This game has a lot of nostalgic value for me to just kind of... I just love the memories of playing this game with others. Like my siblings, my neighbors, my best friend. I had to show this game to everybody just because... Hey, you can play this with three people at the same time, it's amazing. Let's do it. Doing great. Oh, nice. About to go play some Firefly RPG with a couple of friends. And hungry, obviously. Enjoy your food. Hope you have any, anyways. I don't know about Firefly RPG, but good luck with that. You always need a good yoga distraction. Uh, I'm not sure. Something like your job, please. And good luck. It's pretty shitty, to be honest, but the setting's just too good to pass it by. <laughs> Alright, that's an interesting premise. It's pen and paper? Oh, I see. Interesting. So here I save and reset, by the way, because that saves me a dialogue box and I don't have to walk all the way outside. Just ever so slightly faster. Also, I'm going to be leveling the spear weapon here, as mentioned earlier. That's kind of a useful choice. Okay, that's two. Wait a little bit so the flower here can spawn. Three. 
11 kills total to level up. Oh. The mushroom was just a little bit too far in the picture still. Four. Five. Oh, okay. It was worth spawning the other abite down there, so I would get a little bit more leeway. So and I think I'm going to go with three stacks of barrels actually. Two stacks was just a little bit too few actually. I keep saying actually. This is one of the first RPGs you've ever bought. You got Zelda for free on your SNES. But I bought this as a kid with my own money when you were like 11 or 12. Nice. That's really nice. I think the first game I ever bought with my own money that I just kind of saved up was Asterix and Obelix for the SNES. Actually, no, that was Mickey in the Circus after all, because they didn't have it at the time. That way around. Either way, good memories. Combination of dice and target numbers. Hmm. Interesting. So the way I create two barrel slots is first I create two corrupted items. Let's just leave out how I create those. Um, those corrupted items are in item slot one and two that I just created, and those items are special. Whenever I'm selling them. I do not get my inventory reordered. Normally when you sell all of a single item, you get your inventory reordered, which means... It gets rearranged, as in, you sell something from your very first item slot, your inventory gets reordered, so the first item slot is filled now with the second item slot, and everything is just gets shifted by one item slot. However, in this case, because I sell a corrupted item, it does not get reordered in my inventory, and the first item slot is then subsequently still open. So what I do instead is I just kind of do something rather simple, so to speak. I put something into the third item slot, a barrel, then subsequently I sell the item in the second item slot, which does not get reordered because it's a corrupted item. Then the game just checks, is the first item slot uh, empty? Nope, there's the corrupted item in there. Second item slot empty? Yes, it is empty, and so it puts the barrel into the second item slot without checking any further. Because the game kind of assumes... Um, as soon as it finds an empty item slot, that must be the first empty item slot, so I just put the item in there. If it finds the item with the same label, it tries to... I've never despawned that goblin before. If it finds the item with the same label, it tries to put the same item into... That same item slot, as long as you don't have too many items, which would be a stack of four in Secret of Mana's case. So that way, I now have three stacks of barrels in my inventory instead of gel. just the usual one you can have. Each of those items I have two off in my inventory, and then later I will use a glitch, another glitch, to reduce the amount of items I have in my inventory by two each. Which makes them zero, but because they are still in the inventory, I can still select them. They will underflow and go back up to seven. So I will be able to just use the items the way they are. Up until, well, a total of eight times each. So since I have three stacks of barrel, three times eight is twenty-four. I can use twenty-four barrels as soon as I'm done with glitching. Before I run out of barrels. And the spear reaches level 1, how convenient. 
That's some good timing there. It uses bell curve probability rather than linear probability, as I call it. Oh, so you roll with two dice? Or something like that? So either way, we upgrade our sword. Our sword is now the strongest weapon, plus I can charge it up to level 1. Here I will be buying a ton of consumable items in a sense. More like they are actually equipment items, but the glitch that I mentioned earlier that allows me to multiply items in my inventory requires me to throw away items from my equipment stash. And the easiest way I can do this it's just by buying a ton of equipment items, which I will also subsequently want to use because, well, they are useful as protective gear. So, let's get this going. I stand in a very specific spot, which just is on the far left wall on this one here, on my equipment inventory. Equip something, trash it away. Equip something, trash it away. So in theory this should have now zero of all items in my inventory, and it does. That way I will be able to use all of those items a total of eight times. And I will not run out of consumable items anytime soon. Plus I can restock them on the fly as soon as they reach a amount of two. If I use up too many, as in I reach an amount of zero all of a sudden, or reach an amount of one or zero, I will not be able to replenish them on the fly, I would have to rebuy them. Greetings, Avonis, how are you doing, sir? Hmm. T2 are annoying. Mm, I don't know about that. Sounds a bit odd, since that is rather, well, literally binary. And greetings, Extreme, how are you doing? And greetings, other eye. Happy Saturday. Feeling better? Yes, better, definitely. Not quite there yet, to be honest, but definitely a lot better. Thank you. Get this going. Nobody ever flips a coin. And if you flip a coin and give you uh, yourself the option to change the outcome even after you flipped it, you actually can rather easily determine on what you actually want. That is a bit out of context though, since it's not about pure chance in this case. It's going to hit me twice. You're fine? Nice, glad to hear that. I was slow. This actually might be a faster cycle. Nope, never mind. It would have been a faster cycle if he stayed up there than the usual one that we do. I knew he would die there. I don't count damage, but at some point you just kind of get a feeling for how much HP and boss or an enemy has left. Going. Oh, we need the name for the sprite, guys. We need a name for the sprite. 
Once again, the sprite is going to be mostly dead, so the first name I see and like I will take. So just be quick. Is this emulator or original? This is on actual SNES, as in not emulated. This is on console. So everything you see, I just do with a simple SNES controller and on console. Doing Zero Luck Gaming, how are you doing? Uh, Come on, we don't need a name. Sprite TM. Rasputy, the Sulong. Ruru. We only have six characters. <laughs> Ruru. Sure, we go with Ruru for now. Ruru. Sprite TM would be too long, unfortunately. Thank you for the suggestion stuff. <laughs> Sorry, it's only six characters, I should have mentioned that. You're doing fine? Nice, glad to hear that. Also, hope you're doing well, nice unclouded. And you're doing this delirium. Hope everything is fine for you too. Naraka. We also need a name for the girl still, so... Those suggestions are still valid. You would like to apply them for the lady. So, first things first, I'm going to... Unequip the sprite. He no longer has the bow, uh, boomerang equipped. What's the name? If the girl needs a name, Aerith or Eris. Right. Right. We actually had that one, the first one. I like that one. That seems oddly fitting. So I feel like let's do that. Sounds like a good choice. So now I need to be careful to not accidentally kill anything because the sprite needs to stay at the lowest possible level. That is the goal here. So what I will do to achieve that is just straight up kill the sprite. And I also equipped the sprite with a boomerang, just so he would not accidentally hit enemies or kills enemies as he is standing up. Since uh, melee weapons, like the sword, have a get up attack uh, attached to it, which deals additional damage based on... Well, the character getting up when he gets knocked to the floor, which I will be taking advantage of at some point during this run. Just going to kill some enemies to increase my level on the weapon here. You're doing good. Nice, glad to hear that. But yeah. Ares is a really strong pick for the girl's name, so if anyone else would like to throw a pitch, feel free to do that. I need to defeat the two werewolves before we get there. So might take a while until I get that, since the werewolves can be quite some monsters to defeat. Doing quite fine, thank you. Doing really fine. No, qu no complaints. It's 5:41 a.m. here. Wow, been up all night. You have a strange sleeping schedule at the moment. I see. Well, as long as this works out for you, 5:41 a.m. is quite fine. Hopefully it does. That is also pretty early. Uh oh, I might be dead here. I'm probably dead here. There's a high chance of that. Oh, actually, I managed to open the menu. Oh, no, I removed the barrel too early. Oh. Okay, I may have it here. I want them both to start running. Nice. Alright, we got it. 
As long as they run, they will never use their healing water. Kefka fits too. Right. You could also name her Clown for that matter. But personally, I prefer Aries still from that. Soylent? I don't know Soylent. I'm just going to go with Aerith. Just for simplicity, so the name is a little bit shorter than going to use S. That's my reasoning. I don't care about how you actually write it or not. Or how people write it or not, for that matter. So, going to unequip the lady here. That way she is going to be a bit quicker. Be defeated. Also, I need to equip her with the boomerang so she does not accidentally attack stuff. Oh, she's still alive. That's fascinating. Alright. There we go. Solo boy challenge. Comments. I will want to level up just a little bit, so I'm going to be fine for Spiked Tiger. And I will basically take that opportunity to level up my sword and spear weapon along the way, since might as well if I'm leveling up uh, the boy just a little bit on his status. That's a nice crit. That's really low damage rolls. That was a perfect kill, by the way. He had exactly 12 HP left. So, weapon skill up. I still need the sword. Actually, I could just use the axe instead. I still need to also, uh, the axe or the sword to whack through some bushes. I'm going to be leveling the spear after I don't no longer need to whack some through bushes. I'm fine except for the pain. That's no fun. Hope you get better soon. Got. And also greetings to you, sir. Hope you're getting better soon better. I learn. That's so nice. Boy could be Sean after the actor Sean Bean. Mm, I don't even know which movies he stars in. I probably saw some, but I'm terrible with actor names. There are not many I know. So I no longer need. The X, so let's go for the spear, which is currently my strongest damage output weapon, but it's also slightly awkward to use. Very slightly. Not terribly so. Spear will be level 2 rather soon, hopefully anyways. And that's going to be the goal for now. I realized that I wanted to level up various weapons along the way, but I never found the opportunity to do so. And the best opportunity seems to be just essentially in the early game, really. When I don't have too many levels, and I actually also can still use the uh, character levels to make it a little bit safer, a little bit nicer. So, we don't choke around with wolves, they are way too dangerous, so we just use a barrel here. All the barrels have a weird attack hitbox. It's not a bad day though, alright. That sounds nice. I have no pain in your foot too. Zombie plays a lot of characters who die in their series slash movies, you <laughs> see. What's Golden Gold Shows? James Bond movie. I see. I don't think I've seen Goldeneye specifically. I'm not even sure I've seen a full uh, James Bond movie for that matter. I've seen bits and pieces of various ones, I know, but... Never really could get into James Bond, to be honest. It's kind of... Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I guess it's not my thing. Also, last time we voted on which ranged weapon we want to use, and it turns out the boomerang is just not usable for our purse purses, unfortunately. So I will be using... That's rude. 
But I will be using... Uh, the second choice, which was the boomerang. A uh, bow and arrow. Well, mixing up words like a champion. So I hope to gain the next level right here. This would be rather lovely. Uh oh. Let's not get hit here. That would be rather unhealthy. I don't get a level here. I'm going to reset the chairs. Oh, didn't get a level. I did not mean the spear level, I meant the weapon level. Berserk. Berserk. Oh, this takes longer than I expected. There we go. Level 7. It gives me a little bit more of an HP buffer, which I can definitely use against Spikey here. All the brand of sacrifice, did I miss something? Oh, that's Berserk reference. There we go. No, I finally found it. Main character name is Guts. Who's at the pace of blue moons? That's unfortunate. Kind of reminds me of Claymore a little. Ouch. I should have just kept walking. I was lucky to not get... knock unconscious there. So I deliberately get eaten here by the spiky. Because this allows me to... This should be fine. This allows me to control his movement way better. I'm going to be using a healing item here. Just prematurely based on what he's doing. That way... Essentially he has a rather high chance of eating a character instead of jumping away or he can literally not do anything else. He can either jump away or eat the character because I'm that close to him. Fire breath. As in, Spikey doesn't have a choice in the sense that... He can only eat my character. But not do anything else. Unless he jumps away, that is. And if he jumps, I choose to use the bow to hit him up there. Wonder whether it hits me on the right side. It does not. Alright, he's dead. Good night, Spikey. Hey, Balance Maker, how are you doing, sir? Whoa. That was some weird screen distortion there. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Go proxy. I have never seen Ergo proxy myself. I've heard of the moon though. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're on the phone loop. Thank you. Unfortunately, it does not show up on stream, but Wonderful Noob just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much, I really do appreciate that. They still need to update it for... Um, Twitch Prime, as in the alerts that is. I kind of hope they do that sometime soon, but thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate that, sir. I'm glad you enjoy your stay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Order of operation. I need to kill off the characters again. That way they don't accidentally level up when I go and defeat them. So I will want to level up the whip actually. One thing I definitely noticed is that the whip is a really good weapon for quite a few bosses to come. No, not again. Oh yeah, brother von Loop, thank you. Thank you so much. Oop. Oh, just not enough HP, uh, just not enough damage to kill those enemies in two hits. Slightly unfortunate. But I feel like the experience on the weapon is worth it anyways to use it like this. Witch Hunter Robin. Uh, Witch Hunter Robin is one of those enemies that I received from a friend as in just to watch from on DVD discs and stuff. But I never actually got around to watching it. He kind of liked it, I think. So those fish here are actually rather dangerous if you let them loose. But if you have them under control, just by hitting them repeatedly without fail, it's actually not too bad. Like this one here, he just instantly recovered for some reason. Sometimes enemies can do that. And that can turn out really ugly. Like this guy just again decided to instantly recover. Which is why I usually tend to hit them twice before I continue hitting normal. Okay. Next up, we go with the spear, which has a higher damage potential. Or actually, just straight up a higher, higher base damage than the sword, which is going to slightly matter. It's something like one or two swings less with the spear compared to the sword. It depends on the damage rolls in the end. But it can be one or two hits less. At least it's no more, let's put it that way. Seventy five percent of it. Oh, also a bit disheartening if you want to watch the rest, but then you can't find the rest because it's either not out yet or you just don't have it. And then you forget about it until someone mentions it. Can heal once more. There. I should have used a charge attack on the previous heals already, but I kind of missed on that. He can no longer heal now. He's out of magic. He only has six MP. Three times two is six. Nice crit, and he's dead. Oh. Not yet. I guess I mischarged his HP. Alright. The time loss is from me killing the fish at the entrance. Which I did not do, but I will... Well, I did lose a lot of time later on leveling weapons. Which, by the way, I'm not sure... I'm almost certain this run comparison is not technically fair. 
because I'm going to do some additional stuff and not skip a single boss. But we'll make it work somehow. How can kind these monsters are? Just let them sit. Just let you sit there and poke. Them. Yeah, they are really nice and mm, they quite care for you. So I kind of hope them to spit out. There we go. Thank you. There we go. I don't know. There we go. Trying to hit all of them at the same time is basically a must, because those guys, if they let loose, they can combo you and just straight up kill you. Whip Leech is level 1, that's really good. Whip is going to be a phenomenal weapon later on. But now, I'm going to be using the sword again though. Actually, I could have just kept the whip. There's no reason to equip any other weapon until I reach the boss. So yeah, plus I actually need the whip to cross the gap in the Oath Palace. Okay, no ghosts allowed. I forgot about that. Always need to revive them. Go flying. Both are Berserk and Sunken Rocks have incredible artists. Sunken Rocks manga guy is a legitimate anti artist though. <laughs> well, I mean, and draw well, that's nice. Fedoras, thank you, sir. Wow. Eight months in a row. Or eight rumps in a row. Thank you very much, Fedoras. That means a lot to me. And welcome. I'm glad you enjoy your stay. You have a random snippet of Berserk on your computer of gods doing gods things. Hmm. You're good at anatomy, at least. Well, you would think so, but... Kind of questionable at times, isn't it? But... There's a higher chance, I guess. Very much, that's exactly what I was looking for. So, upcoming is going to be the Fire Gigas boss. The Fire Gigas boss is special in the sense that he is absolutely not designed to be beaten by a solo character. And the reason for that is because he uses a spell, or multiple spells in fact, which do damage based on how many targets it hits. As in, it hits all three party members, usually. As long as you have three alive, that is, or three in your party for that matter. And it's actually just dealing three times more damage, plus some more, because the boy does not have the triple magic defense compared to the other two characters that are missing. So essentially he takes a bit more than three times as much damage than usual, and he instantly dies from pretty much any attack the boss is going to throw at him, if he allows that to happen. Also, you need to revive the sprite here, otherwise uh, this cutscene will not allow you to go pass through. So yeah, I need to... ...have some form of method. To the madness, I guess. To not die to this exploder here, for example. So, what I do is, I do the following. 112 damage. The boy might have actually survived that exploder because the sprite was still alive. Now he takes about 220 damage. 
which he will definitely not survive. Lava wave, same deal. And I just do a rather specific trick. There is approximately a 3 to 4 frame window, which one frame is 1 60th of a second by the way, because this game runs at 60 frames per second. And during that small window I can open up the menu just after the spell animation hits, but before the spell damage actually applies. And then I can cancel out the spell damage by using an item onto the boy. Also here he is using Fire Breath. Which is a physical attack, even though it's fire I guess, but it's still physical and can be blocked by a barrel. In fact I have to block it by a barrel, otherwise it will apply a status effect, which is rather unhealthy for me. Since during the status effect as a crowd control effect I cannot do anything. And he could just cast a second spell and to kill me since I also cannot open the menu during it. Lava wave. Alright, he's staying this time. Which is not that good for me. Because he can decide to stay for a long time. Which is technically good for DPS, as in I can get in more damage. But it's also more dangerous. Because he gets an opportunity with the correct sequence of his attacks that he will be too quick for me to recover from general item usage. If I did not use barrels that would be a much more severe problem, as in if I just could not use items in time so to speak. Because I was still in the healing animation from a, well, healing item like candy. Like, let me demonstrate this. Here, during the candy animation, I get that heal! Which is too sm uh, slow for me to recover if the fire giga stays. So if he stays, I do not want him... Uh, I do not want to use a candy at all. So I just use a battle instead to deflect the damage. And during this I have to use a battle, there's no way around this. Once again he stares. Okay, yes, I was starting to run out of battles, but it has worked out anyways. Nice. That worked out quite fine. Good violent anime? I think the most violent one I can watch is probably Attack on Titan. That is kind of my upper limit there. Samurai Champloo, for example, is already too far, unfortunately. I don't have a particularly high tolerance for gore. So we get Gnome's powers, but we will never use his spells outside of opening some passages. Also, I do get the Mana Seed here. The Mana Seed actually gives me some minor stat boosts in terms of attack power, defense power, magic defense power, also magic offense technically, but that doesn't really matter for the boy on the challenge. It's not just for being able to level up spells to a higher level, which helps in the girl and the sprite solo challenge certainly, but it, the basic uh, power increase for the boy is significant enough that I still want to take this cutscene. Oh, actually, um, what is it called? The other one might actually be a bit more extreme on that end. Uh, what is it called? There's some dude with who shoots pictures with a camera. And that kind of kills people, in a sense. It's weirdly messed up. So I unequipped the lady there from the boomerang, so she no longer has the boomerang equipped despite it still being displayed. Samurai Ch Champloo too violent? Too violent for me, yes. I'm not saying it is as a general thing, but 
For my taste, it's just a bit too much. To be fair, I've only ever watched half of the first episode, so I'm not even sure how far that goes. What was the other thing? Also, I ever since I've watched a lot more stuff, so I might be a bit more tolerant to that now. What is the other thing? Let's see. Uh, nice. Very good. Um, speed grapher, there we go. That's what I... Chatter speed? This uh, I call Chatter speed. The name I know it under is speed grapher. That's a really good one. Quite fascinating. But yeah, as I said, I have a relatively low tolerance for gore, unfortunately. I mean, I cannot even properly watch someone play Binding of Isaac without feeling sick in my stomach after a short while. Just kind of... I feel like I would kind of like to play that game, but I guess that's not going to happen. That's just the things you deal with. As in, the gameplay looks pretty neat. Which is also kind of why I'm kind of glad... We got... Gungeon. I entered the Gungeon. That is a really nice one too. So, I replenished my balance there. Now I'm going to save before we go into the Pandora Ruins, because that can be a rather monstrous task to survive as a solo character, since you have to essentially run out the right eye out of magic and the middle eye out of magic. Middle eye can cast a total of 9 spells, that right eye can cast a total of 49 spells, which are decently uh, dangerous. So I need to be careful. It's, you got shutter speed from the camera term, I see. Finding of Icing is kind of shock value based. Yeah, probably. As I said, it's just kind of... I can't uh, watch that much less play. This doesn't work for me. To give you a frame of reference, I guess. No, I'm slow. I love Enter Gungeon. That was a really good one. I got a lot of time out of that one. Actually, it still is really good. Okay. The ghosts just held me back too much and I couldn't pass the sword in time. Not speed down again! This is slightly irritating. Nuclear Throne might be another one you'd like. Actually, I looked at Nuclear Throne. It seems too convoluted for my taste. As in... Just kind of... I guess I just don't really like how it looks. That's probably the main thing. Any plans to visit uh, revisit when the supply drop update hits? Oh, when is that going to be? I actually did not pay attention to potential updates to that. But I would definitely be up for revisiting Gungeon. Look here, throne. Oh, there we go. Green bloody gore! Wait. Want to play Risk of Rain? Risk of Rain was really neat. I like that one. Also, I broke it a little bit. By getting too many upgrades and then went out of bounds and boop, I was stuck there. Too bad. Yep, that can happen. So someone suggested that I would use the sword instead of the spear last time, so I hit both the middle and the left portion. So let's see how that is going to work out for us. I think that's a fine idea. Freeze! So I replenished barrels so I could 
or quickly hit. So the right guy hit one face so far. He can, as I said, cast a total of 49 spells. Also 46 damage, which means after the next spell I have to heal. Actually, I probably want to just already catch the next spell in the first place. And just interrupt it by healing. So my goal is to kill the left eye, only the left eye, not the right one. By, well, just dealing enough damage. The middle uh, uh, eye will revive, as in that's the only spell the middle eye can cast, it's revive. Revive if I cost 10 MP, and since the wall face in the middle has exactly 99 MP, he can only cast at a total of 9 times. So my goal is to kill the light left eye a total of 9 times. The reason why it's the left eye is because the left eye is the one that casts healing spells. I can not really reliably push through... The healing damage with my weapon. As in, you can you see, I don't deal a whole lot of damage. The wall face has reasonably high defense. And so my goal is to just run out the middle out of magic and survive the right eye's onslaught of spells. And since the left eye is now dead, the right eye will now continuously keep using more and more and more spells. More specifically, it will just keep Uh, getting every other turn, as usually it's a three cycle. Left eye, middle eye, right eye, left eye, middle eye, right eye. Actually I'm not sure about the order, but you get the point. And right now it's no longer a three cycle, instead it is a two cycle. Just basically middle eye, right eye, middle eye, right eye, middle eye, right eye, because the left eye was dead. Now that it's revived, which is the first revival here, I need to kill it again. Unfortunately I was pretty unlucky with the hit rolls. So the wall phase, ironically, despite being a wall, is the first boss who has an evasion rating. Which means, 40% of the time, my attacks will just straight up miss, as in... Nothing can do about that, it's pure random. And I'm just also hitting only measly 13 damage per attack, which is why I cannot really punch through 150 heal every time the left eye is there, so I need to keep killing it. But that is the second revive if I have there. And once again, I want to keep two barrels or, or two items of, on each stack every time, that way I can replenish them by using the Equipment Thrashing Glitch of the boy. The sprite can actually not use that Equipment Thrashing Glitch at all, and for the girl it is four of each item instead of just uh, one. Eh, instead of just two. But that is a pretty big difference, that is the third revive. It is very likely the right eye will run out of magic before I kill the wall, by the way. And then it will be completely worthless, as in... There is virtually no way to lose anymore, unless I deliberately kill the right eye instead of just killing only the middle. If I kill both eyes, the wall phase enters a special phase... No pun intended. Where it will slowly move towards the bottom wall, which is layered with spikes. And as soon as it arrives at the very bottom, that is instant death. With no way out. So let's not do that. I think that was reviver number 4. So I'm going to use another candy here. That way I have two of each barrels and two candies and I can replenish all of those items at the same time. Um, I will actually not reach the candy from here. That's two barrels, three barrels, three barrels. I need to reposition myself slightly to reach the candy. 
I just kind of know where I need to stand for positioning. So it's candy is replenished and barrels are replenished. The reason why barrels are so valuable is because just the healing animation does not happen since, well, barrels don't heal. They just only deflect spells, which is the important portion. That was revive number 5. He has 4 more revives left. With a bit of luck, I might actually be able to punch through the entire wall face without it healing enough and running out of magic. But that would require a lot of luck, actually. It's rather unlikely to happen, but it can. I just realized. I do not want to start up. That was revival number 6. 3 revives left. I don't want to charge up the weapon, otherwise I cannot open up the menu. When you have a charge attack ready, you will uh, unleash the charge attack before you can open the menu. And during the charge attacks unleash, so to speak, you cannot open the menu. So that is rather unhealthy for you. That was revival number 7, I think? So two more. One more battle from this one. Alright, one more revival after this one here. It didn't heal, that's nice. Because I'm pretty sure I actually got some damage on the middle over the healing already. Which is not a thing with the lady. The sprite has just spells to destroy the wall phase without care, as in the sprite is rather easy once you manage to get past the spiky tiger to do a solar character challenge with, but he struggles on the very final boss. A lot. That is the last revival. And he needed to heal there, that's a bit unfortunate. How many barrels left? Come on, kill it please. Alright. I'm going to switch to the spear since the spear has slightly higher base damage. Also I need to replenish barrels. Now this was 3 times 6 times 2. So that's 6 times 6. 36 spell cards. So the right eye has 30 uh, 38 spell casts so far. That's 11 more spell casts until it runs out of magic. I think this should be a fine position for this. That's one. I assume I have used two candies. Actually, I may have used more than that. Two. Might just be 10. Oh yeah, he will run out of magic very soon. 4. Actually, it's probably 11 actually. No, that's just 10. Never mind. 5. I haven't missed a single uh, 
menu so far, that's nice. It's not a tight window, it's relatively lenient, but it's easy to miss anyways if you're not ready for it. There we go, he's out of matching now. And the middle should be out of HP soon. I don't think charging up is actually worth it. Probably. Not sure. Charging up to level 2 gives me 100% more damage. But I think the damage is applied after defense reduction. As in the, the double damage is applied after defense reduction. So it does not actually... Actually, no, that's not wrong. That's wrong. So it technically deals more than double damage after defense reduction. In theory, anyways. But I don't get to hit it as often by nearly as much. Oh wow. CB underline BQ just subscribed to Twitch Prime. Thank you, sir. I really, really do appreciate that. The alerts, unfortunately, are not ready for the Twitch Prime subscription, but thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate that. Enjoy your stay. There we go. And the wolf face is done. First try. So, in this case, I decided to just use as many barrels as it takes to negate all the spells, instead of taking one of the spells and then healing up instead. I feel like this worked out better than doing the other strategy. So I, for the future I will just use up straight up all the barrels. ACG BQ, thank you so so much. Really really appreciate that. And greetings BW Izu. And Pantalaika. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? I hope I didn't miss anyone. And greetings Aurei. Aureolin? Aureolin? X? How's it going? Oh wow, and Pantalaika also just subscribed with Pitch Prime. Sorry I did not catch that earlier. Because there is no sound. And I was really focused on the wall. Thank you so much, Pandalaika. Really, really appreciate that. Thanks a ton. Thanks a ton, guys. Oh, I'm going to save here. It's really easy for my allies to accidentally kill bosses, which I would like to not have. And greetings, Aegis Evander. How are you doing, sir? You can sub to a streamer for free, quote unquote. So Twitch Prime is basically based on Amazon Prime, I think. So essentially when you have Amazon Prime one way or another, you get one uh, free trips, Twitch subscription, which you can use on any partner streamer you would like to. So for me that's essentially the same as a regular subscription. From all I can tell. It's just the current system for the alerts I use has not caught on to that yet since it's literally just new. As in I think it was implemented yesterday. And so the alerts are not quite ready for that yet. So. But I hope they will be soon. Thank you so much guys. Really do appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. Ori Let me try that again. Oreolin? 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 Appreciate that. By the way, what does Pritch uh, Amazon Prime do for you on Amazon? I actually have no clue about that. I rarely ever use Amazon, if at all. And greetings, Gain Zero. How are you doing? Oh no, I forgot the... Ah, I forgot the upgrades in Pandora. You can get spear and sword upgrades in Pandora Castle. I should have grabbed those. 
I'll grab them on the way back. As long as we benefit from it, it's always fine. Thank you so much. So, getting the whip here. Whip is actually way more useful than I gave it credit for originally. I don't need it except for one boss, but for other bosses it's actually really, really handy. Amazon Prime gives you discounted shipping and access to a lot of free streaming media. Interesting. Hi, greetings, Scribo. How are you doing, sir? Ignore the X? Sure, I can try that. So, with the spear here, I actually have just enough reach to hit him before he gets the chance to hit me. Which is very handy, because this allows me to just stay barely out of his reach. By the way, he has once again a 40% chance to just straight up dodge my attacks. There's nothing he can do, it's purely random. So if I don't hit him, and he just moves closer and closer while he's walking, with the spear he will not hit me. But as soon as he switches to the second phase, after 50% HP, he will um, actually catch up to me just quick enough that he will get in usually one hit. Oh, nice. A Lunar Boost is amazing for me because even though the Killroy would deal more damage, he literally has no evasion anymore, as he just removed his entire evasion. So it's impossible for me to miss as long as I physically hit Killroy. Unfortunately, it just ran out now. So, use Lunar Boost again, please. Oh, be lovely. Ooh, I was lucky there. At uh, this uh, swirling attack, initially when he starts, he does not actually have a hurt box. Oh, thank you. So that is actually really handy for me. Please keep using the boost. I really appreciate that. Oh, oh, nice, thank you. And there we go. Get right down. A bit of a fake gold here because I forgot to get the weapon orbs in Pandora. Which I definitely need and want to have for the upcoming boss, Jabberwocky. So I will just go and get them. And also upgrade them before I do anything else. Prime Candle Library and lots of stuff depending on the country. <laughs> yeah, for shiny Yagamoth subscription icon. Well, oh, I hope you enjoy it. Also, I think you can now use all the emotes too. Yeah. If you like emotes, that is. I'm actually one of those people that for a long time I didn't care about emotes at all. Just kind of had no reason to use them. But at some point it even caught on to me and now I like using them once in a while. And Gurings Monster. I'm doing quite excellent. How are you doing, sir? And greetings, Heather Riser. How are you doing? In Germany, about 1 million free songs, 1 Kindle book loan a month from the library and Prime Video like Netflix. Interesting. When we have one day shipping in certain cities like Berlin, there is actually 2 hour shipping. Wow. That's pretty crazy, actually. I shop on the internet for your whole family. That might act that actually sounds like it might be worth looking into. I'm actually starting to get curious now. I'm doing excellent, thank you. We happy. Do you dream about this game? No, not so far. I actually don't usually dream. Or at least, more specifically, I don't usually remember the dreams. That is probably more accurate.
Pork with the King. Sword Orb, which I would have liked to have before, and especially I would have liked to have the Spear Orb before. Spear is now going to be level 3, which is, again, still my most powerful weapon, just space attack wise. And also now we'll have a special unique effect on the level 3 of the spear, which, oopsie, I did not mean to enter here, which has actually rather interesting implications in that I can now hit enemies and have an approximately 80% chance to balloon them. Balloon in this game is your literal um, enemy gets stunned for 10 seconds. The higher level balloon is, or the higher level my attack is, the longer they will be stunned, but that's the baseline. It's just a really lengthy stun on enemies. I did not want the sprite to die there, because I'm going to use the cannon in a second. But on the other hand, I've never done this with actually, without actually hitting enemies this path around. Well, let's see, I have four? Four. I counted correctly. Guys, now we're going to upgrade the thing here real quick. It's gotten so bad with me that on Facebook, Twitter and the text message I went to Kappa so bad. <laughs> I just get... what the hell is a Kappa? Oh, the innocent ones that don't know yet. Twenty-five percent price reduced for video games. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So, there we go. Upgrade the whip, upgrade the sword, upgrade the spear. Thank you, let's go. I'll use the magic rope here. You would prefer the simple smiles not to come out as emotes. I think the robot smiles are fine, in my opinion anyways. They kind of pretty much convey what I mean when I write a smiley. Or I guess maybe it's the other way around that I'm now used to how they look and that's how I convey what I want to say with them. That's actually probably more accurate to th now that I think about it. I actually tend to put the smileys backwards on specific places like Skype or Discord because I really did not like how they looked. And then I figured out, hey, you can just disable them, that's nice. Although on Skype it still shows up for the other people in the conversation. But at least on Discord they don't get converted for me. Asky emoji, but I like the mix of now then. <laughs> I see. Oof. Drip. So it's really important for me to save before um, going for the Jabberwocky, because Jabberwocky has a peculiarly peculiar. Is that even the word? A particularly high chance of essentially just straight up ending my character's life if he decides to do that. There's nothing I can do about that virtually. Not technically true, there's things I can do and adjust, but for the most part it's pretty much accurate. Google Hangout loads are yellow diglets. That's interesting. Don't do that, boy. I'll just try to get killed. So oh, let's do this. That uh, girl attack from those fish 
enemies, they actually literally don't deal any damage. As in, they, they can't deal damage, they just look fancy, I guess. So, wish me luck on the Jabberwocky. So, let's see. I can do one charge attack if I level one spear. Unfortunately, they're not hit. And then I need to just use flash attacks. I want to keep changing sides here because Chabberwocky's physical attacks are actually rather dangerous with his hits. 2 7. Also, I kind of need to. Deflect the poison gas. Poison gas is a physical spell, so it can be deflected by using a barrel. It's really handy. And I prefer him using poison gas over using acid rain. Because acid rain is an instant death if I don't catch it. And if I'm mid swing, as in literally just swinging at the Chabberwocky. I cannot open the menu and I'm just straight up dead. There's nothing you can do about that. But I kind of hope that doesn't happen. 50% HP. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's about 15 attacks. 4, 5, 6, 7. More if I get my old low damage rolls. 8. Uh oh. Please don't do that. No! Oh my god, that's. Oh my god, that's so much healing! That's so much. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I could have actually showed you, I guess. But I was mid swing and. Uh, ripped that idea. So much healing! <laughs> oh boy. I found the 68. There's nothing you can do about the healing. It's actually pretty rare that he decides to heal, so that's at least something. But yeah, Acid Rain instant death. Like on the Fire Gigas, Acid Rain is supposed to hit all your characters, but because I only have one character, that just deals so much damage. What are you doing, guys? Just kill her. Thank you. As in, I think it deals about 258 damage to the boy alone. Which I would need to level up to something like level 23 or so, until I have enough HP to survive that. And even then, he can just cast a second acid range right after, or a poison grass if he wants to. Oh, take care Black Death Doom, thank you for dropping by. Have a nice evening. Or good afternoon, or good morning, whatever it might be for you. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. This one I could catch because I was not mid-swing. Eight, nine. Uh oh, that's bad. If he casts acid right now, I'm just straight up dead. And he repeatedly knocks me unconscious with his physical attacks. They have a rather high chance of knocking me unconscious. There's nothing I can do. Okay, caught that one. Might as well deflect it with a heal. Oh, I'm dead. This is why healing is actually not a good thing necessarily, because during the heal I cannot open the menu. A straight up death. Rip number two. Not much we can do. Uh. 
the Amazon Prime Twitch thing, it seems neat, but here in Australia so you don't get neat things. Ah, That's really unfortunate, actually. That's really unfortunate. But yeah, it does seem really neat. Actually quite nice. Thank you. Come on. Shoot. Shoot. No, don't do that, boy. There we go. Let's try this again. Hopefully with 80% less failure. Same with the Netherlands. I have no idea about Switzerland, actually. I do not know. Curious about how that works here. He is so fast. Well, I think so. Thirteen. This could not actually hit. His hitbox is really surprisingly low. I caught that one. Fourteen. That might be death here, if I'm unlucky. Okay. Might be fine. Sixteen. about 30 hits, by the way. 24. 25, if he doesn't heal. 26. Oh, that was way less. I guess I got some critical hits there. Alright, Jabberwocky down. One of the big roadblocks gone. services being landlocked. I think it's more about le legal issues rather than anything else. That's the main reason why it's landlocked from what I understand. But they don't allow new Twitch turbo subs if Twitch Prime is available. Hmm. I mean, does that cost you more than Twitch Turbo? Time is cheaper. Interesting. I mean, sure, it might be a bit more awkward to get it, but if it's cheaper at least, I think that's kind of fine. It is because there is no Amazon in the Netherlands, I see. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, how would they want to deliver then? There is no such station for them. 
would be rather difficult, right? No, don't attack. Hello, attack now. There we go, thank you. So I will be using the sword along the way here because I don't really care about uh, the spear's uh, charge level. But I do care about the sword's charge level. So I will want to kill stuff along the way here. We can't get turbo if Prime is available. Hmm, alrighty. Oh well. Probably a bit irritating, but on the other hand... In a sense, you don't lose anything based on... Anything, really. Well, I guess you just kind of lose a bit of convenience of having only to deal with one... Root company, or branch for that matter. So that's a bit awkward. Sixteen euro month value. I don't know how much uh, Twitch Turbo is for bad stuff at all. I never even considered getting Turbo. So, here is where we get our first item detour. This should be that. With getting the Mitch Mallet this time around. I will be getting rid of one stacks of barrels. Sometime soon. And also, hey buddy, I have a whip upgrade. Please. And also bow upgrade, thank you very much. The question is, do I want to have... No, I don't care about charging up the bow. I don't think. And here we get that thing. That's nice. This is not something I did in my last run. So I will be losing a fair bit of time on the Spring Peak segment. Well... I mean, in a sense, I will be losing time on the Spring Week segment. about getting to run the portway for Hearthstone. Tyrande. What does it involve though? Hey, no ghost allowed. Oh, sorry about that. What benefits is there to the Mitch Mallet Titan? I never found a legit use for it. There are multiple ones actually. Two of the main ones are... It is an item you can use forever, and you can negate spell damage, or just general attack damage from enemies by just using it on the character that is essentially in the process of receiving damage from a spell or an attack. And the damage numbers have not shown up yet. So you can just use the Mitch Mallet on that character, they will not take that damage, as in it just gets overridden. That is one of the main uses, which is what the boy will be using it for, instead of just using barrels, although I have to use the Mitch Mallet twice, because otherwise uh, he will be pigmented, which is not usually desirable. 
The other one is uh, for spell casting. Your spell casters, the girl or the sprite, will cast spells significantly faster if they have the Mitch Mallet. Uh, if they are pigments, because their animations are just strictly shorter. That's it. Exactly, I can use the Mitch Mallet instead of a battle to deflect damage. Which is slower because I have to use it twice, but I can still do it. And it never runs out, so that's awesome. Thank you. Still want to level up the sword to level 3. So I will be doing this during the course of... Well, trying to kill those enemies here. But for those enemies specifically here, the spear is just too good. Those pebblers here, those blue hedgehogs are called pebblers. They have boss level evasion, which means 40% of the time my attack will just miss, and there's nothing I can do about that. Actually, I can now switch to the sword to be able to finish them off. They have a rare chance to drop a walnut, a fairy walnut, but I don't want that. I have enough of them, anyways. So, alrighty. After this. Be my new basic equipment. Oh, I already got those. Never mind. Just want to be safe then. Safe, yes, please. Let's go. Prime costs less in a year than subbing 12 months to Yagan loan. That's interesting. I would appreciate it if you guys don't heal each other, because this just elongates the battle here. No good reason at all. Still going to defeat you guys. Usually anyways. Confusion, by the way, inverts your control scheme. It is a bit awkward to deal with. Alrighty. Sword level 3. I'm not going to bother with leveling it up any further. Next, I will need the bow. Silence again. Silence, actually, when they cast it through the green transition like that. Wait, what? Oh, I needed to talk to a Moogle. I forgot to talk to Moogle. If they cast it like this during a three screen transition, it will take about three seconds to take effect until the uh, inverted controls actually do anything. Um, hey, Chuck Rody, how are you doing, sir? You'd love to know how it impacts streamers. If you think about it, As in, let's put it this way, monetary-wise, a Twitch Prime subscription is the exact same for me compared to a regular subscription. It's just this name differently. That's all there is to it. So, in theory, people that do have Twitch Prime already, they can just, well, throw us up at someone they like. Which, I've received some love already, which is really awesome. And that's really awesome. And maybe considering that there are multiple other benefits on top of it, maybe people would be more willing to... Uh, ...invest into a sub, or well, Twitch Prime for that matter. I have to use... something 
Yeah. So, I used up the stack of barrels to liberate the bear. Also, I did not want to attack while he was casting this. Because while I'm in attack animation, once again, I can't open the menu to deflect the spells. This guy here is the exact same as the other uh, bosses so far, in that he decides to target all characters with his spells, usually anyways, except for Balloon and stuff. But that means his spell damage is tripled on the boy alone, which can make it rather awkward. Thankfully, the bow has a pretty decent damage range, and he is rather easy to hit with the bow, as in this guy is basically made to be hit with the bow. As long as he does not use Balloon and then uh, cast another spell on top of it, I will win this battle. No question. But this is the kind of combination he could do to just completely kill me. There was nothing I could do about that. He just uses Balloon, then the Thunderbolt or something like that, and I'm dead. But he only has 740 HP, which means he's dead of in about one or two more shots. Come on. I'll miss that one. There we go. Hey, Kitan. Thank you for the good luck, and greetings to you, Corona Cat. How are you guys doing? Good evening. Hope you're doing well. I see, yeah, I mean, that makes sense, Heatherizer. Essentially, it also works at the same time for Amazon, that they get more people. Oh! I might as well get Twitch Prime. Oh, what is this? Twitch Prime actually offers rather interesting services and might invest actually more into it. Because once you have your foot in the door, so to speak, you are more willing to go... Well, from having Twitch Prime, uh, Amazon Prime already, might as well... You get the point. It's actually pretty clever marketing that... Really is not bad at all, in my opinion. As in... They re literally don't take anything away from the people. They only add to what you already have and can get. From what I understand, anyways. Hey, pupil, how are you doing, sir? That hitbox is so annoying. Yep. The Spring Beak has actually a defensive hitbox on both his feet and his beak, which means with physical weapons. Physical weapons? With short range weapons like the spear, the axe, or the sword, for example. Um, he can just straight up negate your attack entirely if he feels like it. And there's nothing much you can do with that, as, except for trying really hard to oopsie, not hit those specific uh, defensive hitboxes, as in, if you hit your, the defensive hitbox before you hit his body, you will deal zero damage. And that is way, way too easy to do. With physical, uh, with short range weapons, well, physical weapons. But if you use long range weapons, like the bow, actually, specifically the bow or javelin, to be more precise, it's not much of an issue, actually. Not much of an issue at all. Doing well, nice, glad to hear that. I'm doing quite excellent, thank you. So here I'm going to wait real briefly, because it, that will happen. And that's the easiest way for me to kill them off. Also, I need no new items now for the simple purpose of having more armor than I had up until now. So I get a wolf's band, which I will actually not equip 
I just get it for its secondary purpose. Wolfspan gives plus 5 agility, and agility is useful to open up chests and have a higher chance of not getting a trap in it. That's actually how it works. Um, for this section I will use a whip. It is just a shame there is no version without Amazon. I mean... I don't think it would be worthwhile for Twitch to have a version without Amazon. As in that's kind of the entire point of it, to promote Amazon in that sense. Which, I'm fine with that. That kind of promotion, that's alright. And hide your shitty prime badge? Oh, come on. I mean, the battery is not quite the same. You don't get all the same benefits, right? Is why it's well, Amazon. Also, I already got to equip stuff. So, I want to have a better helmet, gives me 6 more defense. I want to equip better armor, which gives me 7 more defense. Which is actually quite a lot, since it's just straight up less damage taken from any source. It'll be completely phased out eventually, though. Very likely, yes. Contemplating just killing those owls here, so I level up my whip weapon, but on the other hand, I can go to the desert and kill the uh, bow rats instead, which have rather low HP. Which might make a bit more sense. I mean, I guess the Prime Subscription matters in that sense that it's an additional branch or company or... Essentially form you need to fill out and get through until you get the benefits, which I definitely see as that can get rather irritating potentially. Once again, I want to level up the whip. Might as well do it here. Uh, I also want to charge up that thing. Do I have anything else to charge? No. I need to real quick do this. This is a pretty good position. Should have worked in theory. Let's see. Okay. Perfect. Sprite is dead right away. Silence. So I'm going to wait until silence actually runs out here. There we go. Because it's rather awkward to deal with that with silence. So I only have a level 1 whip, but that's sufficient. I don't plan on actually charging off the whip at all against the Great Viper. I just like to have the distance between me and the Great Viper with really quick attack damage on top of it. So that's extremely handy. So if he goes off screen, I can consider charging up, but much higher than level 1 it would not get anyways. I don't want to go too close to the Great Viper because his physical attacks are really quick and whenever he changes direction, he adds another different physical attack on top of it. As in, he can combo you up to three times with, well, specific path thing, if he decides to be funny like that. And on top of also being able to 
cast uh, gem missiles. So if I had a shorter ranged weapon, I would be on the constant danger of getting hit by those physical attacks. Which you can deal with, it works, I've done it with the spear before. But the whip is just so much more convenient, I can just hit every single time, and even if I miss, it's not a big deal, I'm far enough away to just walk in away anyways. Also sometimes he will decide to just continue moving, despite you hitting him. Usually he just stops in his tracks after you hit him. And this is where he hits me twice. I got Pigmit, and I'm a bit straight up there here. Yep. This is what he can do with physical attacks. Uh, he has a swallow attack, so to speak, where he just straight up swallows a character and Pigmit's the character. And Pigmit character have three quarters less defense, which means, well, I take a whole lot more damage. That's the short version. Which is pretty bad for me, as you might be able to imagine. Okay, that's how quick it can go against a Great Viper, and why I prefer using the whip over the uh, shorter range weapons. At least in a solo challenge. It doesn't really matter too much in a glitched run. In a glitchless run, you would use uh, spells anyways, which doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I actually would kind of welcome getting Pigmit there, in fact, because it helps you Cast your spells faster. It just annoyed me that the waves build up and they are like, yeah, no, sorry bro, wrong country. I mean, there's nothing they can do about the wrong country until the legal issues are solved. Because different countries has different legal systems and how you can set up a company and all that jazz. It will just take them a while longer until they have a fixed seat in that country that can handle everything. As in, that just takes its time as well. I definitely understand the annoyance, by the way. Because it's the same for me. But, I mean, it's understandable. As I said, I understand the annoyance. I agree. But there's nothing that they necessarily can do. They won't settle in the German, uh, Netherlands because it's too close to Germany. Well, that's an odd one then. That doesn't seem like a sustainable choice. That seems like a rather strange reason, to be honest. Oh, to keep that. I forgot to equip the equipment too. Well, the sprite is going to be dead unless I use a Mitch Mallet on him. And he is dead despite me using a Mitch Mallet on him. Alright, let's try this. I guess the sprite just dying in one hit here is both beneficial and not so beneficial. I can just do the strand strategy where it doesn't matter that the sprite is dead right after. Because he can cast the spell anyways. Like this. That's a silly explanation? I think so too. That's probably... As in, let's put it this way, if I'm completely honest, that sounds like an explanation someone just randomly came up with and then spread. Even though it just kind of... that seemed to be the most logical reasoning for that person in question who came up with that. Or maybe they misinterpreted something that they may have said at some point. That's just kind of what I'm thinking when I hear that. Not saying it couldn't be. But it's a bit strange, to say the least. It's more likely that it's legal issues rather than placement, because they lose a lot of customers they do it exactly like that. Or potential customers for that matter. Barrels! Barrels too strong. Stay here.
How much HP does the snake have? 1360, I believe. So about 24, 25 hits. Actually, probably a bit more because of low damage rolls. Like... 29, I would guess. 28, 29 hits. I did not keep count though. So far he has been nice about his jewel rain spell cost and it didn't hit me while I was trying to swing at him. Uh oh. Because after jewel rain hits, as in actually hits, it would be a rather easy step for him to just straight up kill me. Snake rattle and roll. I always wanted to play that as a kid, but we never actually got it. Nowadays I know it would have been ridiculously difficult, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. <laughs> also it's directly two players, so that's pretty awesome. Oh the greens, right book cloud, how are you doing sir? Sorry I cannot miss that. My friend Ram works for Amazon so I like them, he's pretty cool dude too, so I Ram should. <laughs> well that's one way to handle it. to the last level. Interesting. Hmm. Only played it on stage so I got it, but never since. I guess that can happen. Uh, actually, I don't need to save here. Okay. States. But yeah, I mean, either way, in the end, at least for our Twitch place, so to speak, you could say that you don't really lose out on anything. Because, actually, that's not true. You do lose out on something, but you don't actually lose anything based on how they handle this now. As in, you don't get any less, you just don't get more compared to others. This is a bit unfortunate. Austria and Germany use the same Amazon thingy? I see. I wonder how that is for Switzerland. them to die here so I can actually level up my whip. I want to have level 2 whip. The reason why I want to have level 2 whip is pretty simple. I want to use it against the upcoming boss is called Mech Rider. I feel like those pebbles are a terrible cho target choice for leveling up the weapon though. They have so much defense and evasion, it's pretty difficult to hit them. Alright, the weapon leveled up though, so that's nice.
<laughs> We've mainly been stalking around the channel. I see. I appreciate that, CGBQ, and you're welcome to keep lurking and stalking if you'd like to do so. Or communicate and talk with us too, that's really awesome. Either way, your presence is really appreciated. And that goes to anybody. Oh, take care, Heatherizer. Enjoy your Mexican food. Hope it's going to be awesome. Will I do a Tyrannic Ma anniversary run? I could. I could, actually. Yes. No reason not to. Might as well. So, sure. I'm going to do a Tyrannic Ma anniversary run. When is the anniversary going to happen, by the way? Oh, I need to talk to the other guy twice. I forget again. Stop getting distracted, mark him off. But yeah, Terranic Ma anniversary sounds fun. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for five drums in the room. Thank you so much, sir. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, okay. <laughs> Had to pay dues with this up, finally. <laughs> I see. Thank you, CGBQ. I do really appreciate that. And I also realize, to anyone wondering, $5 a month is a lot of money for a lot of people. And if you need that money, please unsubscribe. Your presence is highly appreciated already. So just stick around and have a good time. <laughs> oh wow! Krasny Oktyabr just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you, sir. Thank you so lot. I really, really do appreciate that. Wow. Unfortunately, the alert does not work yet for Twitch Prime, but I really, really do appreciate that. Let me actually do this one here. It's a wrong name, but oh my god! Holy smokes! Another one. Krasny Oktyabr and CPS just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thanks a lot, guys. Wow, thank you so much. It wasn't last year's time on the 20th? Yes, but around the same time, so it would be the 21st. That is the reason you had to cancel? Yeah, I mean, as I said, $5 a month is a lot of money for a lot of people. And... I just appreciate you around here anyways. Thank you very much. Why is the sprite still alive? Right. There we go. Which prime shops are strong indeed. Thank you so much, guys. Did I catch Peter's stream last night? Actually, I did not, no. But I heard from Ryukwes a couple that he got a lot of Twitch Prime love. So that's really awesome, actually. That's quite amazing, to say the least. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. Really, really appreciate that. So I want to heal up just for safety here. October 18th, October 20th, let's see, um, around that time there's going to be the California Fire Relief Marathon, so it probably will not be on time in that case for the Tehranic anniversary run, but I will do one around that time. Let's say towards the end of October I'm going to do a Tehranic run one way or another, maybe before if I just feel really like running Tehranic earlier than that. But guaranteed towards the end of October.
The reason I charge up for my weapon, by the way, instead of just hitting and hitting and hitting, is because he always counterattacks with rockets and stuff. And that is pretty unhealthy for me. If he hits more than one, or even one, it is actually pretty devastating already. I'm going to get up here. Hey Mike! Oh, where's the food bug? I forgot. I'll activate this as soon as I beat this boss here. Oopsie. Mike, how are you doing, sir? You have a crown? They got you! No! Hope you're doing well, Mike. Should be online. Did I miss the... I missed the split. Whatever. Hey, Phase 1 Skeev, how are you doing? And greetings to you, Aura... Aurora Boraron. Bora. How are you doing? And also greetings to you, Instixic, and... Don't care. Hope you guys are having a lovely day. Just uh, charging up, charging, purchasing up a bunch of armor here for equipment thrashing purposes, or later, or general use in general. You gifted Civilization Five to your father last year. He put like one thousand hours into it. Wow. That is a worthwhile gift, to say the least. That's amazing. My mother actually has the same wave, Heroes 5. Heroes of Might and Magic 5, that is. It's pretty fascinating how much she plays that. Fresh coffee, thanks for stream. No problem, enjoy your coffee. <laughs> Happy not to have a crown. You can actually hide the crown, I've heard. If you really want to do that, but hey, crowns are nice too. He always hated hitboxes in Secret of Mana, and never really understood why some attacks hit and others didn't. They are rather odd. It's very deterministic, but they don't always make sense, to say the least. Doing well. Nice, glad to hear that. Sword weapon up. Whip weapon up. Let's go. What? <laughs> I was wondering, why can't I not go outside? Oh dear, guys. There, two, six, six. Alright, oh, fair enough. So it is. I'm going to. I probably not don't need to save. Let's just go. But I do need to equip my equipment. I forgot about that. New equipment. A lot more defense. A lot less damage taken. Except for my two minions. Oh wow, there we go. So trying to deal with the wolves is actually the easiest if you have obstacles between you and them, because they just keep running into them. But dealing with wolves is a monstrosity on its own, to say the least. I want to level up the sword to le the next level, and I will have to kill quite a bit of enemies to achieve that. In fact, it is level 4, that means 9, 8, 7, 6. six uh, 100 divided by 6 is 90, that is 15. Uh, 17 enemies total I need to kill. To level up the sword. Oh, I thought he would die. I was mistaken. As long as I land good damage hits, the wolves are not going to be too much of an issue. Hopefully, anyway. So, oh my god. This is scarier than I like to admit. Uh, I'm to heal. There we go. 
I kind of hoped we were a level up before I need to heal, like this one. But that didn't happen in time, unfortunately. Oh my god, Jingo TV just subscribed with Titch Prime as well. Thank you, sir. Rump. Don't rump the frogs, that's mean. Either way, uh, Jingo TV, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Thanks a ton, sir. Hold <laughs> a laugh. You guys are too generous. Come on. So, not too many more enemies, and I should have the weapon leveled up soon. Could be that. The other wolf just ran away. He didn't. Go here. Nice crit. I really wonder whether it's worth to level up to level 4 already with the sword here. Since I'm losing out on some experience with the sword. Based on killing bosses with a fully leveled up weapon already. And Dark Skies, holy smokes. Also just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Alerts still need to be updated for it to work with Twitch Prime. But I really, really do appreciate that. So many new faces. Enjoy your little emotes and... Well, enjoy your stay. Thank you so much. Hey, my bot actually catches those, that's awesome. Uh, wrong way. Wait, what? Wait, where am I going? Where am I? Oh, wow. I completely lost on where I was currently at. Oopsie. So let's see whether this is going to be worth it to charge up to 4. I'm curious about that. 105. I don't think that's worth it to level up to 4 already here. Probably not. Yeah, thank you so, so much, guys. Thanks a ton. Now that I have level 4, it is fine to charge up all the way. But before that, it was not really that great. Actually, what I should do, that was 147 high damage roll, is in equip the strength power wrist, which increases my damage. I should not get hit during this boss fight anyways, at least in theory. I'm curious how much more damage this will do. Delicious Ryu. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. So that is almost exactly 10 more damage. So that is 200% of the 50. I guess it kind of makes sense. Also, I can just stand here in the corner instead of having to awkwardly face back and forth. That's pretty nice. Good night. It's actually not too bad with level 4 sword. Just a bit slow to level up, though. Hump. You really love these wolves. The wolves, actually, I really liked fighting as a kid. They felt like a bit of a challenge. But speedrunning it... They are real monsters. They are real monsters. And yes, I did get my console fixed. This is now on console again. And real quick, even though this has the wrong name, to all of you, just a little rabbit for the new subscriptions. Thank you guys. So many. Jingle TV, Dark Skies, Zipias, Krasny Yokta Yabur, also Vukay. Thank you so much, guys. That means a lot to me. Holy smokes.
So, alright, we move on here. I can't skip the Ice Palace because this just is not a thing, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that was a lot of damage. <laughs> he died about five times over. Actually, I don't need to save. Because this is the Frost Palace, right? No need to save. Not dangerous at all. Actually, the main reason why I don't need to save is because you get automatically revived if you happen to die inside the Frost Palace. Not if I die outside, though. Which I kind of hope doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't need to reset. Yes, indeed, Bash Boy. Yes, indeed. Yep, I messed that one up last time quite a bit. I actually just figured out you have a Porsche away. This is interesting. I could technically skip hitting that switch over there. I don't technically have to do that. Also, now that my sword is already leveled up, I have no problem of switching back to the spear for the balloon effect. Yeah! Balloon effect. Hey, Macaque, how are you doing, sir? Prime is replacing Turbo. In countries where Prime is available, it replaces it, but it's not available in every country, from what I've gathered so far. So yeah, there's that. I'm actually curious how much damage a charged up sword will deal to those mini bosses here. Hey Maverick, how are you doing, sir? Let's see. 177. In theory, if I get a lucky critical hit... I could potentially skip. Um, one of the phases, but it would just need a literal critical hit here. Let's see. No crits, unfortunately. Oh yeah, there's that. I didn't expect a critical hit, but it would have been nice. There's the crits that we needed, that we didn't get. So, essentially after you deal 300 damage to those basic lizard guys, they will... Transform into the blue lizard guys, as in those purple guys transform into the blue guys after taking 300 damage. They have a total of 600 health, as in that means exactly twice as much health. Which means if I have some way to deal over 300 damage in one swing, I can actually kill them. Before they transform, which means I would skip their second form here. All good here. Nice, glad to hear it. Mark the silly right away. Bam. I kind of hope to level up. So I would get an HP refill, but apparently that's not going to happen quite yet. Do you have barrels? How many? Six. Six and zero, that should be fine. So I'm going to heal up before I go on here. That seems like the reasonable choice. Then we get Pigmit and just jump straight down instead. 
Be gone! Well, nope. Quite conceited for shall. Time for your punishment to come. By the way, your punishment is like pirate. Your punishment. Only level 1 judge for the first one here. Otherwise, I will not have enough time to react to his spell. Acid Storm actually does not deal that much damage, as in it is layouted to only hit a single... No, that's actually not true. It is supposed to hit your entire party, but it does not deal inherently much damage. So if I had just a little bit more HP, I could actually survive getting hit by it. Also, fun fact. Um, Ice Saber. What this was supposed to do is half your damage output, physical damage output, against the Gygus. But what it actually ends up doing is it increases my physical damage output against the Gygus. Also, I just realized, level 4 charge attack with the sword is really bad for me. The animation takes way too long. And he can't just straight up hit me here. Oh boy, I may have to switch to a different weapon or adjust my charge timing. Scram! So this is what happens when you die during any portion of the... Ice Palace. You get a shield, we call it the center shield. No. Hey Roof, Ruff, how are you doing sir? I keep wanting to press all the switches that I normally have to press, but they are already pressed. No. Bye bye Twitch Turbo Batch. Bye bye. Okay. You still have the batch? Well, probably for a while. Ah, got it. So, do I just switch to the whip weapon? I guess I probably want to, even though it's... No. I'll try to... Instead... I'll try to... Time my sword attacks instead. Thank you, with a good luck, I can never lose that. Time for your punishment! You never died in an ice palace before? That's kind of likely. Okay, I swung four times after he disappeared. This is too many. I'm going to take that. That would have killed me again if I unleashed the level 4 charge attack. That is actually rather awkward. Okay. Five. Five attacks after two Mitch mallets. Yeah, alright. Level 3 is way better. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was 9 attacks after the Bowder Mitch Mallet. There we go. Freeze Breath, I need to use a Barrel. Unfortunately, Barrel removes my... Unfortunately, Barrel removes my Weapon Enchant. Ooh, I need to wait a little bit. Okay, that would have been once again too slow there. I was lucky that he decided to not use his other attack. I really need to get the timing down better. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's try 8. Nice crit. 
really appreciate those crits. He only has slightly more than a thousand HP. Also, I use a barrel on top of him. That way, the barrel actually attacks him. It has a really odd hitbox, which is kind of strange to use, but it works. Let's see, I need. Just slightly to the left. Ever so slightly to the left. Okay, that works. No, I messed up! I almost reset there, by the way. I messed up. Alright. Alright, I concede. I'm going to use the whip instead. It's too dangerous to use the sword. Whacked. Also, I want to level up the whip one level higher, which I was going to do in the Fire Palace, but in theory it would be useful right now. So there's one big downside of having a level 4 sword already, I guess. So what was in the chest on the right? I forget. An axe orb? I think it might be an axe orb. Yep, that sounds nice and stick sick. Uh, going to use another barrel here. More reasonably get across. On this side, you have to cancel the auto subscription. I hope they kind of keep it so it does not get reset. That would be nice. Alright, we keep the whip. Hey, Coface, how are you doing, sir? Jay. You like Pokemon, by the way. Coface is a Pokemon speedrunner. Pokemon Red, to be specific, I believe. So, yeah, using level 2 whip. It's going to be a bit awkward, but definitely better than constantly dying. Wow, that's so much less damage, though. That is so much less damage. I think... I will use the sword anyways. This is basically... way more attacks required to actually defeat him. So I'd rather charge up late. So I use up a level 2 attack. Because level 2 attack with the sword is fine. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this kind of works. We can get into that route and I'm okay with this. Too much right was a couple, I'm reading everything in caps in his voice. <laughs> well, why not? Hey Nightfall, how are you doing, sir? You're just unsubbing so you can sub on Prime. Oh. <laughs> Also, if you are like Diablo 2 speedruns, or just general Diablo 2, Nightfall X is a Diablo 2 speedrunner. Shouting on people here. Thank you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8.
Okay, I'd rather attack early there rather than late. Even though that was pretty much guaranteed to not hit. Oh, don't do that, please. Don't kill me, please. Don't kill me, please. Don't kill me, please. I messed up. Thank you. I removed the barrel too early, so I got turned into a snowman. That's why I use a barrel, by the way. That don't get it turned into a snowman. But that's really unhealthy for me. The 12 month sub party should be starting soon. Yes, yes indeed. Should be starting soon. Oh, never mind. Process without overcharging if no sprite feels bad, man. I mean, it's a challenge. That's kind of why we do it. With the boy is definitely a bigger challenge than with most other characters. One, two, three, four, five. And greetings, Pardua. How are you doing? Okay, four hits is enough after two. Which mallets. Starting to get the hang of the timing. There we go. He's dead. And we get a fake ice saber. The fake ice saber does not actually work. As in, it literally doesn't work. That's a lot of time saved despite dying twice. <laughs> Hold on. Didn't see any other option. <laughs> Let's see. Thank you, Ruff. Thank you, sir. Turbo Prime is going to ruin a lot of streaks. Probably. I really hope they manage to find a way to convert them or merge them together. That would be really nice. because he can't change my name. What would be your name, new name? I think... Oh, please don't kill me now. That would be really awkward. That would be super awkward. Alright, I'm out here. <laughs> I'm going to heal up. Just because... Beat up Santa. I didn't beat up Santa. I beat up the evil incarnation that was taking... control of Santa. Right? At least I think so. So next up, I really want to level up the whip. I will do this in the fire palace though. So I'm not going to bother killing wolves with it. Ow. Please don't kill me. They have a chance of killing me here. Because they could gang up on me. Wolves are so scary! Oh my god. I might just go the cheap route and only use a barrel for the rest. <laughs> I'm really glad I healed up. I don't usually heal up in my runs at all, just because, eh, hey, you don't get hit enough anyways to worry to matter. You know, solo run they do. Expachi, thank you. Wow. Thank you, so for the Twitch Prime subscription. Expachi, XX, thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Hope you're doing well, sir, and once again, thank you very much. Well, I still need to be converted and adjusted. Unfortunately, no alerts yet, but you have my thanks. And the bot really re uh, reacts to this. Who finally I could sub to your channel thanks to Twitch Prime. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. Wolves can stun lock you like nobody's business. Yep. They move tsunamis in the mana fortress. Yeah, tsunamis can be really brutal too. The difference is usually that they have a... <laughs> the difference is that they have... Let me check right. Four, three, two... Alright. Now I really want to save before we're in there, because it's easy to die. I felt like I was about to say something. The difference is... 
Oh yeah, the difference is that you actually have comparatively more armor compared to the wolves. And you, in a sense, take less damage, relatively speaking. On tsunamis, that is. And greetings, yay. 408, thank you. Appreciate that. Definitely have so. And that's really nice in stick stick, I like that. That's really nice. the Reaper. Come on, attack already. Thank you. So, those guys have actually a really, really low HP. So, I just use those guys to level up my whip weapon. Next level. I don't think I can hit them. No, they are on high ground there. Slightly awkward, but it still works. Fine. Level 18. So yeah, two hits from the whip will kill them. I only need, I think, 15 enemies to level up the whip to level 3. Good to be my goal here. The level 1 charge attack guarantees that I two-shot those guys. Since they have approximately 150 HP. Okay, whip level 3. Revive the sprite. Because we need him to open up the passages. You grinded out the crap of the ice country. I mean, for some reason, at least to little me, the ice country seemed to be like the perfect grinding spot. So I can definitely see that. I'm not entirely sure why it appeared to be the perfect grinding spot, since it is quite dangerous to say the least. But it ends up working really nicely. Just, I guess the wolves do take a lot of physical damage. But objectively speaking, the fire pass with those bow rats is way better. On the other hand, you don't get to go in here until after you complete the ice country, so it kind of makes sense. This game. <laughs> I see, that's nice about the dark. Bam. Alright. So here's the thing this guy uses Earth Slide a lot. And Earth Slide is really dangerous because. Not necessarily because of how much damage it deals, Earthlight is supposed to only hit the single target, but it's level 7 Earthlight, so it has really high base damage. Plus, this guy has respectable magic uh, power stat, despite not looking terribly smart, as a, well, the kind of Minotaur wrestler he is. He does not look smart, but he is really magically gifted, you could say. I and mean, whose Earthlight really hurts? Ah, uh, don't do that. So... I survive an Earth Slide. Zero, zero. Alright. I survive an Earth Slide without too much trouble, but... He can cast Earth Slide so quick again... That it is actually a real issue... For him to chain cast Earth Slide... And just kill the boy with... 
two of slates. I think two are enough to kill him. If he hits them, that is. It doesn't happen... Always? I think it happens sometimes. Also, this is the 50% HP animation, where he turns red. He's now a red bull. More energy for everybody. No flight wings, though. Originally I thought I had to run this guy out of magic, but just basic regular attacks do you enough damage to kill him after, well, a reasonably short amount of time. I did not want to attack there because Earthlight would have hit me if I did. Also I wanted to keep the barrel for just a little longer. Because the physical attack would have overrun me, and physical attacks from the Minotaur, at least the uh, charge, uh, has a high chance of knocking you unconscious, which is really, really not healthy for you. Boom, there we go. <laughs> it was grinding at Sock Sage Jock, grinding magic at Northtown Castle entrance. I see, yeah, I can definitely see Northtown Castle entrance. This is right after you gain access to the fire seat and the next magic level. That makes sense. Well, let me grab something to drink real quick. Sorry, that may take a second. Stay hydrated, guys. Also, don't slouch in your chairs. Sit up straight. It's probably the good choice. Minotaur's name is now Harry. <laughs> Alright. If you remind me, I'm going to change the split name into Harry. I like that. You're a Minotaur, Harry. We are Min. Wait. Actually, Gorgon Ball is probably. The better wizard, because he is crazy powerful in terms of spell damage. He has more spell damage than the Dark Lich himself. It's actually quite ridiculous. The thing is, whenever I say sit up straight, don't slouch in your chair, that is when I... Oh, I just noticed myself, I probably should not do that. And I felt like, well, maybe some people might find that to be useful as well. Does Red Bull pay you to make the statement? I don't think so. And if they do, I don't get enough. As in, I don't care much about the energy drink. But I would take payment in... Kinder Chocolate Eggs. I love those things. Give me a second. This boss fight is exciting! Almost as much exciting as when you sip a, fresh, a refreshing Red Bull from the maximum energy rush. I didn't do that well, but... <laughs> it's a thing, I guess. Sometimes you get amazing toys. Oh yeah, Kinder Surprise. Actually, that chocolate is really good. By the way, Barrel Strats, because that's the easiest way to get through here. But yeah. The toys can actually be really neat. I just always 
what I like to do, I, what I prefer to have are those complete little statues or whatever plastic figurines. Because I think they just look nicer. But the things that you can assemble are really neat too, just because I kind of like assembling stuff. Even if I didn't really care for the result usually. Don't slouch every 30 minutes. Oh boy. I think every hour would be fine, but I could do that. I have an announcer for that. <laughs> You're nearly 27. Hey. That's when you start to really appreciate that stuff, isn't it? <laughs> well out confirmed. Eh. Maybe. Not today anyways. Hey, acrylic. How's it going? And also greetings to you, Cinehel and Ketmo and Valhalm Rock. The Morgue. Oh, oh no. Oh no, I forgot to reset it. <laughs> and also greetings to you, Zipfierst. Hey, not sure I said hello. No, the Romper Raid. Uh oh. Bye, chat. Bye bye. You are now on the Romper Raid, the loader. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't reset the lobby. <laughs> Oh boy, I forgot to reset the valley. No, oh, Quilted Hood in though, that's not the... Oh, I can't actually use that. Oh, I didn't realize I could not use that. Don't have space. Rump. Rebut. You're fine. Nice, glad to hear that. And yes, I'm doing quite excellent, thank you. Also, let me get rid of that thing. I didn't realize the boy cannot equip the quilted hood. Well, now I do. This is quite the armor upgrade, by the way. I'm not used to having armor in this section, so I'm probably going to be more careful than I need to be. But we'll see. On the other hand, on my more recent-ish run, I actually died to the vampire. That was rather embarrassing. Job interview? Job interview? Did I miss something? Whoever has a job interview, I wish you good luck. All the best. Hope you get it. If it's something you wish for. Alrighty, rabbits. That was the romper raid, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't get too drunk, because otherwise the romps will just kind of Nibble on your ears until you wake up. It was like pretty sure the last one. I think it went all right. Admin for something doable from home. Nice. Good luck. What do I think of Legend of Mana? Amazing graphics, amazing music. The gameplay is okay. But the graphics and the gameplay... Basically, I feel like Legend of Mana has probably my most favorite final boss of any game ever. Just the setting, how it looks and how it feels and the atmosphere is just mesmerizing. And Legend of Mana is one of those games where I think I spent about an hour or two in my playthrough just sitting around listening to the music because I didn't want to continue and the music to end. It's pretty fascinating. Great question. If you could remove the one enemy from the game, no bosses, which would it be? Uh, the wolves. To be fair, casually I would not remove the wolves, I actually really like them casually. But the ice holders from the ice country, speedrunning wise, are the biggest menace. 
other than that, which other enemy would I remove? I'm not sure. I'm actually really not sure what that what enemy I would remove for casual play. We the cloud is gone. <laughs> Be running wise is definitely the ice haulers, but casual? Not sure. Really not sure. Hmm. Maybe the red bats, actually, just because they don't seem to serve much of a purpose. And thank you for the good luck, can definitely use that. Tsunami Master Ninja, I actually like those guys. Interestingly enough. Master Ninjas are a challenge. And I kind of like them as a challenge. I'm contemplating just teleporting out to get a better sword. Actually, I will do that. I will just go outside and get a better sword instead. This is a time investment of about one and a half minutes-ish. I feel like it should be worth it. Hey RTB, how are you doing, sir? Stop sacrificing frogs! Stop tag! Stop tag! So, the sword now can level up to one level higher. And also will deal a good chunk more damage. Over the course of the next few bosses, the sword will level towards level 5, which is actually really beneficial. That is actually the thing that swayed my decision to go for the sword right now, so it levels up to level 5 earlier. I'm also contemplating just killing some more enemies along the way, so I get... one more level, but I'm not sure how valuable that would be. Boosting beam, that's not nice. I think this does actually a good chunk of damage, so I'd rather not take that damage. I have the option. Those guys here should have literally no dice against me, as in they don't deal enough damage to punch through my teeth. And I was wrong! I was wrong. Either way, they are easy enough to defeat. I would like to get one more level just because of how Vampire and Doomswall looked last time. Hey, I like those guys. Let's see, if I go in here... I actually have no idea what's in here. That's an empty room, isn't it? I guess it's not technically empty. But it, there are no enemies in here. Exploring with Jagamoff. L21, there we go. Just a little bit more of an HP buffer, a little bit more defense, a little bit more attack power. I think that is really valuable overall. Also, what I forgot to do, I upgraded the sword while I had it in hand, which does not actually upgrade your weapon, or update your weapon more specifically. So I actually have to switch away from the sword and then back onto the sword for it to actually recognize that. Which you can also use to your advantage by keeping the level 3 spear in your hand while you already upgrade the spear to a higher level. And still get benefits from the balloon effect.
Tidezing percent indeed. Let's go. So this wall is pretty much the same as the first wall fight. In that I kill the left eye, the right eye will repeatedly just cast uh, spells on me. Which I did shot reflect with a barrel. The left eye would heal the middle, which I'd rather not have happen. But the difference here in this case is that, for one, the left eye's physical damage attacks, or physical spells for that matter, are actually too weak to punch through the boy's defense on one hand. Also, I will actually deal sufficient enough damage for it to matter that I hit the middle portion as well as the left eye. Because I will deal more damage than the eye on the left can heal. At least that is if I hit the middle. Nice crit. Uh, no more barrels. Alright. I need to go and replenish my barrels real quick. So let's do this. For anyone who does not know, if I have two, let me just demonstrate this real quick. I have two barrels of two stacks here, and all the other items are nothing. All right, actually one candy. So I have two candies and two barrels, two barrels. What I'm going to do now is I equip an item and then throw it away. I equip an item, throw it away, equip an item, throw it away. So what that did now is I now have zero barrels, zero barrels and zero candy. What that did for me is pretty straightforward. I now have eight of each of the items in my inventory again instead of just two. Which helps me tremendously to defeat this boss because the barrels allow me to just deflect the spell attack and then just attack with my sword subsequently right after. Also the right eye in this case he would run out of magic twice as quick as long as he uses Thunderbolt instead of Energy Absorb. Thunderbolt costs 4 magic points, the right eye has 99 magic points total. I'm just attacking a little bit too early don't I? And as soon as it runs out of 99 magic points, the right eye is literally no threat at all anymore. It's really important that I keep killing the left eye because it's the eye that actually heals the middle portion again and again. In this case I want to actually heal up instead in case I make another mess up. So we settled back into a rhythm, where I think I need to wait just a little bit to... Actually I can't wait with the barrel attack. That is virtually impossible without actually taking the damage from the Thunderbolt instead, or the energy absorb for that matter. What I could do instead is use two Mitch Mallets. This will allow me to hit the middle eye this time. This works actually quite fine. The only difference is I invest one more menu, but I don't have to replenish the Mitch Mallet. But the timing works out just fine. So I don't have to worry about replenishing. That's nice. I need to use the Mitch Mallet once to deflect the spell, and the second time to remove the pick me effect that the Mitch Mallet normally does on you. And greetings, Ceres. How are you doing, sir? This tune is one of your favorites in the game. Battle tune is really good. It's really, really good. By the way, the middle portion can revive the left eye up to nine times. Then it is out of magic. I try to position myself in a way that I hit both the middle and the left eye simultaneously. Simul simultaneously it is, I think. Not simultaneously. Hey Dark and Dark, thank you for the host, sir. Appreciate that. 
I'm doing quite fine, thank you. Oh, the ones before? I see. Yeah, the temple is really ominous too. Actually, it's probably even better than the boss tune. In the setting, the mood anyways. I'm not sure it's better, but it's really good. It just really captures the moment in a sense where just kind of what is going on? Why is everything so dark and kind of scary? Yulan's song always gets you emotional. Interesting. Doom's eye gets whacked, it's basically dead already. Ouch, I messed up. This is what happens when I miss the menu opening. Nice crit. The middle should be dead soon. As in about 4 or 5 more attacks, I think. I did not keep count, by the way. That's kind of what I assume is happening. One. I swung too early. My damage actually could not reach because I swung that early. Oh, it was only two. Alright. So I think upgrading a sword is actually worthwhile. Just because it is... Nice here? I'm not sure about that. Hmm, questionable. music when the one horse is in the air. That's an amazing tune as well. There are so many good tunes. This one is really nice too. Just based on what it conveys. No, don't run frogs, that's rude. Frogs are friends, not food. Well, let's hope Vampire is going to be a bit nicer than yesterday. Yesterday? Three days ago. So, there's not much I can do about the sprite and the girl now still being alive. I will just try to sacrifice them the easiest way possible, which is, I hit the vampire once, he's jumping up. And the idea was actually to get them hit there. I'm just going to do this instead. Oh no! Alright. No, jump! 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 Jump, 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 jump. Sleep ring. Oh, that actually hits me? I thought it wouldn't deal enough damage for it to hit me. That's pretty bad. I mean, sleep ring costs him no magic, so he can do that indefinitely. And now he's just jumping around. You clown! Oh no! I actually miss... I messed up the path in there. If he is funny like that, he can kill me here. Please don't do that. Um... Arrow first. Alright, thank you very much for not killing me. I appreciate that. A lot, in fact. Oh, come back down, please. Oh, thank you. No! Come back down, please. Oh, thank you. No! Come back down, please. 
Stay down, jump, 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 you clown. Alright. I guess that can hit me. Big Bring at least doesn't hit me because it's a physical attack. How much damage will that deal? Good chunk. Aww. Sleep ring again. This guy is so difficult to hit. By the way, he has 2,400 hit points. He will eventually run out of magic, but that will take a while. I just removed the barrel. So I would be ready for him to come down. Rude. Wow! So many misses. 40% chance to miss, by the way, still. That has not changed. One more bow after this one. I'm getting positional. No! Keep jumping! Please keep jumping. Um, I need to bash some stuff. Actually, it's one more, isn't it? Pretty sure it's one more. This chocolate was at three as well. Yep, yeah, two as well. Eventually I'll get you, buddy. Eventually I'll get you. He's jumping high. Okay, that does not work. Jump. I kind of rely on him jumping multiple times here. Ah, oh, another miss on a fully charged attack. That's really unfortunate. He will always jump high after he takes damage, by the way, so I kind of know what he's doing. Also, I will release my charge attack so I can deflect his spells if necessary. Also, it's kind of awkward if he decides to use Energy Absorb, because that just always costs me more time to kill him afterwards since, well, he just regenerates HP from me. That's not nice. That could be dangerous. That could be really dangerous here. Because I have to release my charge attack before I can actually open up my menu again. Alright, I kind of got lucky there. He regenerated a bit more. And some more. Come back down, you clown. <laughs> nice, that was a really good hit there. How does that hit me sometimes? I need to figure out the rules. 
I want punches again. I could be really, really, really bad again. Please don't kill me. Okay, thank you for not killing me. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going to do this instead. We Barrel slide. If anyone can count, he can cast uh, reason energy absorb total of 49 times combined. I did not keep count, as you're wondering. It always seemed to work on Buffy. I wonder where the down left works too. It seems to work. Might as well be a switch. No, 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 no. Down right does not always work. That is kind of odd. Maybe the oscillation is too strong there. Uh oh. This boss fight? It's actually anything but sleepy. Sure, it's long. Oh, nice. But it's really dangerous. If he just decides to do the wrong combination of attacks, I'm just toast. Say them that. To refill my barrels again. Can't imagine doing this fight without uh, glitchless, that is. And I can't imagine doing it glitchless that way around. Thank you for jumping. Appreciate your jumpage. Let's try bottom left. Maybe you have more luck with bottom left instead. Bottom left so far has not betrayed me. Energy absorb. Oh shoot, I didn't catch that. Okay, I can catch this one. More energy absorb. Give it a regenerate. Ah, oh, come on. Keep jumping, please. Come down, your clown. Once he runs out of magic, by the way, if I just keep having the barrel equipped, I'm literally invulnerable to anything he can throw at me. I think he can absolutely no longer hurt me, as long as I have a barrel equipped. Once he runs out of magic, that is. But until then, this will still take a while. First boy only run, I think has really good luck on this guy in comparison. There we go. One of them is Hope, the song that plays when you step outside right before the Mana Beast fight. Yep, that's mine, that's mine. That's mine. 
I love that track. It also has a really awesome title, so that helps. One of them is Hope. That's my favorite track of this game. Just so tired, I think I'll catch a power nap in the middle of this epic fight. The sleep technique actually saves a few frames, don't worry guys. <laughs> oh, something like that. Hey, Stelson Lifer, how are you doing, sir? Yeah. Drawing stairs in a helical shape is annoying. I can imagine, yeah. At least so it doesn't look weird. So one of the annoying boss fights is gone. There's still the Gorgon Bull, there's still the Dragon Worm that we need to fight, there's still the Red Dragon. I'm not looking forward to the Red Dragon at all by the way. That's going to be quite a monstrosity to deal with. By the way, through those guys, that's the new skip for two controller. You can just straight up skip through them. If you have one partner dead in your party. No! No frogs into the same food box. No. By the way, what was exactly highlight worthy? I may have not caught on to that. Bam. Hi right, guys. Oh. That was... Interesting. That was really interesting. I've never seen that movement before. Actually, can you hit me again? No, he does not hit enough damage. I did not realize this guy doesn't deal enough damage at all. If you have proper equipment. Um. He can't just virtually not damage me. And he only uses physical attacks from this point on. Actually, I can't get out of here either. Whoopsie. That's okay. Hey Stingers, thank you for the good luck. I never used that. How are you doing, sir? I'm going to heal here. Can I get him to do the same weird bug as Mantis and? Uh, no. The arena is. Well, actually, you may be able to do that if you lure him further to the left. But I don't have an option right now. <laughs> I don't have the option right now. Uh, you may be able to do that actually. But you would need to get him stuck on the middle pillar type thingy. By the way, the ar entire arena is shaped like a heart, in case anyone is not catching on to that. Uh, if you. Managed to get him in the middle pillar, maybe? But I think he might jump to the side instead if you do that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder whether just hitting him with physical attacks is better. Probably is actually. I don't ever think about it. Wow. He really doesn't like to get hit right now. There we go. Hope it doesn't soft lock. Actually, it's just saved, so it wouldn't matter much. Moi only all bosses? That's a long one. Most likely indeed. I thought the Metal Mantis would do something else after he jumps a few times. Wasn't there a chest? No, there was not. Right. There's a chest on the right. I don't remember which orbs was on the right. But actually, unless it's a sword orb, it would not be useful. It might be a sword orb, actually. Clap, clap, and then you're on post. Just always let the Emberman clap, otherwise something like this might happen. Where your other party members are just going to become ghosts again, as usual. Which is quite fine. Um, I'm curious, I think those are Axe Orbs and Boomerang Orbs. Let's see. Emery Foon! And greetings, Nekushasu. How are you doing? Axe Orb. I'm okay with this. I'm not going to upgrade the Axe Orb. Whip Orb. Oh, Whip Orb is sweet. I really like the Whip as a weapon in this solo character challenge. It's 1000 gold. Oh, yeah, that one over there is. I was wondering about the one on the balcony. Balcony? Right there, yeah. I have a nice day indeed. I hope so do you, Nekushasu. You're doing great. Nice. Glad to hear that. Wait a second. I kind of wanted to have level 5 sword here. On the other hand, there's not really a good place to level that up, is there? Oh well. Wow, that's a pretty big crit. 491. That is about... Two more hits like that. I think. Actually, it's more like three more hits like that. So considering that was a critical hit, wow. I don't know how much damage that deals. I don't want to find out. Right now. But yeah, four more hits like on him without crits, and he's dead. I think it's four anyways. Might be three. Parks are silly right away. <laughs> nice luck indeed. Semi-third mech rider! Yeah, I'm faster. Oh, that was only two. Does well, he only have about a thousand five hundred? Three crits would do him in. I thought he had more than that. Alright. Wow, that's really low HP. Vampire has almost twice as much. That's ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get the Moogle belt because. Why not? That's an oddly specific number with 1258 HP. How do you get him stuck in that position? Um, give me a second. Basically, Mech Rider is pretty stupid in how it works. 
Uh, he tries. He has a basic AI script where he takes an action. He can. He checks whether he take whether he needs to cast a buff on himself or not. <laughs> yeah, that paper is ugly. Um, but the, if he has a buff on him, he will use one of two attacks, which are pretty devastating. If he does not have a buff on him, he will just cast a speed up on himself. So that's why he doesn't do anything down there. The physical portion of his attack would be that he wants to charge across the screen and just kind of run you over with his machine. That's the basic idea of the Mech Rider. However, because of how his AI script works is that he only runs you over if he reaches your vertical position on the screen, as in... He tries to get lower and lower and lower in the arena, but... Since he has a larger hitbox than you do, he actually cannot get any lower and he's just kind of stuck there, pacing around slowly left and right until he... Well eventually gets hit and then takes a reactionary action. If I were to move up just a little bit with the boy, as in on the arena, I would allow him to dash across the screen and just run me over, which is not a good idea. Not usually anyways. Got the gold tower key. Yay. Oh, it's how I think. I don't know. Let's see. It's a prox there it is. Well, in order to, for you to get the Moogle belt, you need to uh, see her tail. What should you get from this guy? I'm not making it. There's nothing on this blasted island except this sea hair tail. What? You want one? Let us see her so Keep it in my pocket. And that's all you do. Then you take this to... This village. And exchange it for amazing music. And I guess the Moogle Belt as well. There is actually literally no use for the Moogle Belt anymore. Actually, that's not true. There is one more use for the Moogle Belt at this point. It's a sea hare's tail! Hooray! And one of the best music in the game. Love it. So good. Got a Moogle belt. Thank you. I love this music so much. It's so good. Skip the flail of hope and go straight for the morning star. And then I guess I go for the lime slime because that's what my splits say. Uh, sure. I don't think there's any danger from the lime slime, so I'm just going to go. As long as I equip my equipment, that should be fine. My defense just skyrocketed. Rather fascinating. It's water! Water is back in the oasis. I mean, how long did they survive without having water? No clue. But apparently, quite a while is the answer. I always thought you need to press the switch on the left there. You don't. Uh, I don't know what's in here. I think it's a thousand gold. Yep. No need for a thousand gold. But now I know for sure. Until next time I forget it. Pretty sure I knew that at some point.
Oh, by the way, Stinger, you know this one, right? Just in case you didn't. Oh no! I accidentally leveled up the lady. It's going to be a bit more difficult to kill her off. But, because I'm going to get rid of her sometime, it's actually not too terrible anyways. So we just jump to the right here. Wait, what? At least that's the idea. My perfect record! There we go. Now we jump to the right. The barrel has a really super strange hitbox. You've seen it already. Oh, kill the lady, please. That's really silly. That I accidentally leveled her up. Because I've not saved in quite a while, I'm not going to reset this. So, now we go for the sword. More damage. I should also go and upgrade the sword one more uh, level. Actually, I should not do this before I enter the Grand Palace. That's kind of a bit of a waste. Ouch. Please don't do that. Hey, Maddox. <laughs> I appreciate that, thank you. I think I'm just going to try and slash him. Rude. And greetings, Metal Hero Regulus. How are we doing, sir? I guess cannon travel is, is not for everybody. I'm actually less removing the damage from this because it is well damage, but more because I think it's faster to remove the damage instead of getting knocked to the floor and then standing back up. Evil Gate. Kind of awkward. I'm too far to the right here. Should work in theory. So I should have barrels again. Yep, yep, alright. All the barrels. But the question is whether it's more efficient for me to charge up, or... It's actually almost certainly more efficient to just slash on him until he dies. Wow. That's really awkward. That was really awkward because I used the barrel and then he casted the second spell. I can actually not use items while I'm barreled. And I'm being considered barreled as soon as I use a barrel on a character. Which makes it rather awkward, just because... He hit me with that spell no matter what, basically. Let's demote. I can't actually deflect this one, because I just attacked. I think it's the same. I can try. Oh, I couldn't deflect it. Oh, I 
Hey, so want the rump. All the rumps. I can't say they're using a healing item as that just to make it certain, but I feel like this guy is dead soon enough anyways, so it shouldn't be an issue. There we go. I wonder whether there's a reason to charge up my weapon aside from reducing the amount of counter attacks. I guess when an enemy has a certain amount of defense, it is valuable to avoid that from happening. You're the javelin orb! Yay! Oh, also, I should... Hmm. I should have actually leveled up the sword to level 5 here. Because the next boss I do want to have... A high level charge weapon that has a get up attack animation. Alrighty. B. Kill them. Thank you. I'm not sure how much more I need. But it shouldn't be, hopefully, too much to level up the sword to level 5. Oh, hang on. I expected there to be... ...an enemy. No pun intended if there be. Here I have used a uh, rope pull mechanics to not lose stamina and still attack the bees really quickly. I think it's faster than just regularly smashing them. I tried to hit both of them at the same time too. There we go. Level 5. Let's go. From here we go north northeast, I think, to go back to the gold island. Around here. Missed it! It's east from here. And I'm not scared of the blue spike at all. But I'm really scared of the Gorgon Bull. Gorgon Bull, one mistake and dead. That's how that's going to work out. What chest was that? Is that an axe orb? I think that was an axe orb. Spear orb. Uh, I guess I don't really care much about spears at all. Not at more. Spear is an amazing weapon early game. But basically right now the sword replaces the spear just because it's higher leveled up. So here, I want the blue spike to eat the boy. And preferably not deal any damage with his attack. Oh wow. Why are you actually dealing damage, dude? Come back down, please. He should not deal damage at all. Maybe I was on that influence of Acid Rain? Or Slowdown, maybe? Slowdown may have done something. So this is what I want to do. His 
physical damage is not strong enough to punch through the boy's defense, and because he takes zero damage, the default animation for after getting numbed on by the tiger is the badly hurt animation, which has a get up attack. And the get up attack has the same power level as my current charge level. So I'm just using that fact to repeatedly attack him really, really quickly to make sure to work with him. I'm literally never attacking this guy. I am only letting him attack himself in a sense. Those are just all counter attacks. Unless he actually deals damage with his eating. This works out quite fine. Come back down, please. Oh, shoot. This could deal a lot of damage. Alright. I'm going to heal up. The fireball is virtually the only danger in this fight. Acid bubbles should not hit me. This does about 8 damage. I can take 3 of them. I think I could actually attack, and if I hit, it should be dead anyways. Maybe. No, it was that worse. Alright, there we go. That is how you deal with the blue spike. In honor of the only challenge me and one of the guys I live with are going to do a run where we pick someone. The only challenge? Come on. Thank you. So let me check real quick. How many battles do I have? Do I need to replenish them? Because Orgon Bowl is one of the fights where I absolutely do not want to waste any time on replenishing my items. I just want to keep hitting him, hitting him, hitting him until he is defeated. Also, there's a good reason as to why I left the tower. Because Gorgon Mole is a true nightmare. So. You are familiar with how I dealt with Minotaur, Minoras. The big difference between Minoras and Gorgon Bull is Gorgon Bull has a fair bit more defense, so it's a bit more difficult to punch through his life total. And also, if I miss a single Earth Slide, cancel. I'm dead. He does about, I don't know, 400, 500 damage with a single Earth Slight spell cast. And he spams them basically. But don't use barrels to deflect it. I'm not going to be fast enough to use another item potentially for the next uh, spell cast. Also, his defender actually does some work in terms of how much less damage I deal now. But at least I will eventually kill him before he runs out of magic. For the girl, the only reasonable way to defeat this guy is to run him out of magic. She does not deal enough inherent physical damage to deal any damage whatsoever. And she at that point does not have buff spells yet. So she has to run the Gorgon Bull out of magic. 
that is 33 Earthslide casts. Boy at least can kill him before that. So this is one of the few boss fights where the boy has an advantage over the lady. Actually it's probably not one of the few, but one of the more significant ones. This is the halfway point, that's the animation for the halfway. I need to replenish battles. Actually, I'm going to be using the power wrist to deal slightly more damage. Just by virtue of having more strength. Because if Earthlight hits, I'm dead anyways. The physical attack actually is going to hurt a lot more if it hits, which in theory it shouldn't anyways, but that's the theory. So I deal a good 5 to 6 damage more per attack, which means I need to hit him a whole lot less actually. Uh, it's 33 spell costs before the Gorgon Bull runs out of magic. Earthlight costs... Uh... Actually, to be more specific, Earthlight costs 3 magic points. Defender costs 2, which means... For every 3 Defender, it's basically 2 Earthlight costs. So 33 Earthlight costs cost 99 MP exactly. I'm actually going to do this here. That's not even what I had in mind, but I guess that kind of works. Nice crit. It should be that soon. Like two or, more, or three more hits. Two. Aha. First try! Wow. That went way better than I expected. And greetings, Ankari. How are you doing? That is a lot of spell costs. Yep. If you... No, actually you couldn't even do that. I just wanted to say, if you have Luna already, you could use MP Absorb on him, but... You don't have Luna yet, because you actually need Lumina to get Luna. Usually anyways. So stop slouching in your chairs. Rabbit gets whacked. No, don't eat frogs. Greetings and good evening. We are you sense a record incoming. Technically speaking, it probably is going to be a record, but frankly... This is not a competitive category, but it's probably going to be the fastest known run, so to speak. Ninja and Luna are actually backwards. We need to go to Luna first before we can go to Ninja. Oh, I don't kill them. Thank you. So yeah, if you do the girl only challenge, what I recommend to you is every time the Gorgon Bull, if you're not confident in cancelling out uh, 33 Earth Slides, uh, what I recommend you do is instead... Well, I actually needed to go on live. Whatever. What you do instead is you cast Analyzer every single time he casts a spell. That way, uh, Gorgon Bull is going to be locked into place. Without him being able to do anything because the analyzer animation is still going on. Oh, 
Oh, I can try that. That does not help you. Doing pretty good, very happy. New super light road bike and long week candy. Nice. Enjoy. I'm doing quite excellent, thank you. You're confused. Why is the girl casting spells? This is one of the few exceptions where you have to cast a spell on an orb, otherwise you cannot progress through the game. There's going to be a few more instances where I need to cast spells on orbs, otherwise they will not allow me to... Wow, well, not kill them. Otherwise they will not allow me to progress through the game. Wow, she's more than that. As in, notoriously, the Grand Palace, I need to activate at least seven or actually at least six orbs to progress through it. To be able to... ...go further. Wait, what? Oh, shoot. Did I forget to seal the mana seed? I think I forgot to seal them on us, you guys. Oopsie. Eating some nums indeed. Get the chocolate eggs. The little ones. The tasty ones. Ah, uh, Where am I? Wow. I completely lost my way. Oh, I think I forgot to seal the mana seat. Oh my god. That's a bit embarrassing. Now I have to go back in here. Oopsie. The time loss now? Yep. Very much. On the bright side, I'm going to get a new sword orb just after uh, defeating the ninja. Which is going to increase my damage output a fair bit. Also, this is one of the weird places. Where it just spawn next to the entrance instead of in the entrance. When you enter the door. I guess normally you don't... <laughs> right there. Normally you don't enter the palace, but in this case you do. The boat is a bit unsteady. Perfect space! Boat climb! Essentially, if I did not need the other two characters alive, I think North might be faster. Whatever. Essentially, if I did not need the other characters alive for orbs once in a while, I would have ditched them already. Because there's a glitch in this game where you can permanently remove party members. Also, you don't have to talk to Gemma here. You can literally just walk around his uh, event trigger. On back.
path. You destroy the king. Think again. You know, this guy really likes balloons though. He's spaced out. 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 Balloons are dangerous, guys. Really dangerous. Why did the guards only just notice that he's not the king? I guess up until now he behaved very king-like. Probably. I don't know. You still use the sprite spear? Well, I mean, in special occasions, sure. No reason not to. So, let's see. Do I go and upgrade my weapon first? I think I need to upgrade it at some point anyways, might as well do that now. Alright, let's go. Upgrade the weapon. I'm allowed to pass out from this heat. Hey, you have water now here. I'll upgrade. So the three weapons I'm using in general are actually four. Early game, spear. Then later game is replaced with the sword. Then as secondary weapons there's the whip and the bow. Whip is just a long range weapon, really convenient, really quick, super simple to use for a few bosses. Uh, where was I going? And the bow is just your ranged weapon which allows you to hit enemies that are on high or low grounds. And you also bypass certain immunities or triggers for that matter. Triggers? Something like that. So, here's something. I'm going to equip the whip. Actually, that doesn't not work. Never mind. This might work. Let's see. I don't think this works. Nope. No, don't sleep lower me. Rabort, become the rabort. So here is where I actually wanted to do this. Use a Mitch mallet. and we jump up instead of to the right. Essentially you always jump in the direction of which you are facing whenever you are using a rope pull jump. So if you can somehow gather on the correct space with your entire party and then hit a rope pull, we somehow it doesn't matter how, including pick me, as long as you have the whip equipped, stand in the correct spot and then hit the rope pull, you will actually jump in your facing direction. Normally the game does not allow you to hit rope pulls right next to you, but because you're pick me, the game only checks for whether you have the Mitch Mallet equipped or not, eh, uh, the whip con equipped or not. So that's all it checks for. That's all it needs to know. Boy sleeping on the job again, yep. That's way too often. The pure lands are going to be a nightmare to deal with, by the way. More specifically, the three remaining actually dangerous bosses are the Dragon Worm, the first boss of the pure lands, which is arguably the most difficult boss casually, in my opinion. The Mana Beast. And then also, last but not least... It's 
stop dodging, please. Last but not least, we have... He has 999 HP. What? He actually deals damage? Oh yeah, I have the power wrist equipped. I need to... <laughs> change that. The Red Dragon is going to be a monster as well. Red Dragon and Dragon Boom are my biggest worries. For the Mana Beast I will just need to level up and sufficiently and hope for some armor drops. That's all I do. I will farm a bit for the Griffin Helmet before the Dragon Boom, might as well, because I want to level up sufficiently for the Mana Beast and at some point I might have to do that. Might as well do it against enemies that gave me a good chance for an item drop. Goodbye. In girl or sprite, only do you permanently remove party members? I will do that once I'm past the Grand Palace. The Grand Palace is the next area coming up, and I will be doing that as soon as I get past that. Actually, let me... Don't attack them. Don't attack them. Thank you. I want to save real quick before I engage the Agrogopilon, because that guy is a, quite a monster. Pretty unstable. Actually, I just saw, thought of something. I might as well skip the underground portion of the city. It's all bosses, which means I can actually back, back to another boss. Can I? I would need to defeat the Hydro first. I can actually go forward and then backwards. Nah, I'm just going to go through the area normal the way. That's fine. I'm just going to go through the normal. So here is where I'm going to be equipping actually highest defense values. Because Agroopilon can be a real menace if he decides to be a monster like that. Let's hope he doesn't. <laughs> the boy faces fear, laughed in its face when it attacked him and stabbed it in the chest. Oh, that sounds all right. So, I actually do want this guy to jump. So normally in other runs, you don't want this guy to jump because it's way easier to control him while he is still on the floor. But in my case, while he has no legs, he cannot cast spells. He does a good chunk of physical damage with this movement attack, but I prefer that movement attack over him casting spells because uh, the spells just deal so much damage. But the one thing I need to... Oh, oh, I'm dead. I think. Most likely anyways. Oh, I've survived. Surprising. Ah! Don't do it! <laughs> Alright, I need to use a battle first. Alrighty, I was lucky there. So Burst does a good chunk of damage. That is not the issue, that it, oh, how much damage it deals. I actually survive it because it's inherently a single target spell, unlike other boss spells. So for a single uh, solo character challenge, the issue about Burst is that he can cast it so quick again that there is virtually no chance for me to recover from it. By the way, can you see the stuff? Oh, I should not have used that. 
Uh, that might be an issue. I was lucky there. I was super lucky there. So I want to be up and to the side from the legs. That way he will always jump instead of using his burst attack. Alright, that went better than I expected. Hey Daijin, how are you doing sir? I kind of like this music for some reason. By the way, I determined that it's faster to go straight up here instead of to the side. Not too bad, glad to hear that. Why don't you use weapon charges? Uh, to have more mobility on one hand, on the other hand, uh, the Agrogopilon has barely any defense. So. Weapon charges are more valuable when you punch through more defense. And since he has such low defense, it's just better for me to straight up attack, attack, and attack again. Unless he were to be off screen for long enough that it would be an issue to do so. Or more difficult, I guess. Let's just go. I think I need to respect the Hydra. Because the Hydra can be a real menace. So what I'm going to be doing is I go to save. And then we engage the Hydra spot. Also I need to get more chocolate. I accidentally used up uh, one too many. So essentially weapon charges, per charge level, you gain 50% more attack, which charging up just one level takes you about as long as recharging your weapon after a swing. So unless you have some wait time involved, to, which gives you the opportunity to charge up your weapon, and you do that, well, during the wait time, or you need to punch through the enemy's defense as well, Otherwise you would not be able to essentially damage him properly. Unless those two conditions are met. Or one or the other, I guess. It's not really worth charging up your weapon. There we go. That's kind of what I was looking for. I'm going to be replenishing my barrels here. I'm likely that I'm going to use those again. I do keep the wall span though, because it gives me plus 5 agility. Magic Absorb, rude. Magic Absorb is actually a major issue from the enemies if it's landing on the sprite or the girl. Because you have to spend one additional fairy walnut. I've completely forgot the Anity Axe here again. Also, I don't know what that chest over there is. Axe or Boomerang, I think. Or Javelin? Might be Javelin. Just curious. Boomerang it is. Alrighty. Hey, I'm curious now about something else, actually. Can I...? Oh, stop that, please. Can I do this? Yes, I can. The other two characters don't follow me though because they are ghosts, but you can actually go straight up there. Which might be interesting for an all bosses run.
I'm not sure all the trigger works. If you're just going. Because what I could do here is just straight up go up there. Theory. That's a theory though. I'm not sure if that actually works. So this guy here. I hear breath. I think that will engulf me in flames. Well, it would. You want damage. This guy has a fair bit of defense. So here's another thing. This guy is actually quite problematic. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm not dead. Alright, I guess he does not cast that on everybody. But my defense is down. I might be dead here. I'm dead. So yeah, this guy is actually really problematic. Because of his attack patterns. He is a real menace. Actually, what I'm going to be doing here... In a second. I should have to kill them off. Oh, it's a ton, actually. Whatever. Um... I'm going to be saving in... The Ice Counter instead. The Hydra is w actually a pretty dangerous enemy. I don't think I fought him before with the boy only. Okay. So this could be interesting. So the reason why I want to save in the Ice Country is because... I can use this to save warp. If you game, yes please. So with this, I can now save warp into any place where I'm currently at, in a sense. So that means... This includes... The Hydra place. If I happen to die at Hydra, I can just whoop straight up warp back into there. I hope that works. I don't actually know whether it does. I assume it does. Wow, three clawers there? Feed them to the wolves. I should probably try to upgrade all my weapons sometime. I don't need the boomerang. Just to see which one has the highest base damage. I actually still need that. Boy has actually really good defense overall. Pretty neat. So let's see, base attack. 73 on the sword, what's the whip? Uh, let's try the whip for now. I actually really don't want to get close to this guy if I don't have to. But the whip might not be strong enough. Oh my god. His range. His range though. I really like the whips range though. I have to replenish my barrels. Oh, what? He can engulf me in flames with just his physical attack? Also, acid range is really bad because that reduces my defense by a ton. I think this can work. I'm not sure. Let's see. Actually... You don't deal a whole lot of magic damage, do you? How much MP does message and cost? 4? I think it's 3, actually.
Oh no, I'm stuck! <laughs> oh, that does not help me! Uh, yeah, alright. It's going to be really awkward here. I might just be straight up dead. And from four seasons to the Mana Fortress, wow. That was a pretty lengthy trip. Welcome back. That seems like a rather lengthy trip indeed. I didn't replenish them. Not clever. Wow. Took taste to finish this as a kitty, yep. That sounds about right. Hey, we have different music now. Doesn't sound like the correct music for this. But hey, I'm going to beat the boss. Alright with that. So the main issue what I got stuck there. The main issue is really that the acid rain really reduces my physical defense by so much that he punches through my physical defense easily, as in way too easily. Let me check my I need to thrash three items actually. This should be fine now. Uh, zero, zero, and also zero. Alright. Ouch! You monster, stop attacking me! Please? Wow, that was a double attack? How did that work? That was fascinating. Ouch. Current. What did I just do? Those crits are really nice, by the way. I'm not sure, but I think the mouse immunity might have increased crit. Don't kill me, please! Fine, I'm going to do the same thing again here. Wow, it actually does double hit. This is so strange. I can't think of a way to make that work with dodge attacks, though. Ouch! No, don't do that. Please, don't do that. I don't know how much HP he has left, but I don't think it's that much. I'm going to use a battle here, just to get out of this. What? Arrow didn't work. I did not press B button. What? What? Poison prevents barrels? Oh my god, we found the ultimate count to the barrels, guys. I think poison prevents barrels. I think we found the ultimate counter to barrels. You are poisoned. Aren't you still? Wow. Barrels are not invincible. Alright, I'm going to be... Be 
using a battle here. That's two hits. That's fascinating, actually. Let me do that again. It almost seems like that's guaranteed hit. Let me try that again. Whee! <laughs> Alternate use of the barrel slide. Whee! Okay, let's see. Two, two, five, three. Alright, only two. Maximum. Oh no, I didn't I missed the window. I missed the window. <laughs> Ow. Rude. Crit. Nice crit. Ouch. Ah, he didn't even hit. What? I guess he landed a low damage throw. Wow, Cynthia Cyberdash to subscribe, thank you. Thanks a lot, I really, really appreciate that. Thanks a ton. And good evening. Right now I can't read the chat, sorry about that. But thank you so much for supporting. I hope you enjoy your stay. Yes, we got it. Oh my god, the unicorn in your kitchen just subscribed to Twitch Prime, thank you. Thank you, the unicorn in your kitchen. I really appreciate that. Unfortunately, the the alerts are not updated yet, but this one is for you. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's amazing. Oh, it smokes. Hmm. Actually, there is no saying whether... That's interesting. I wonder whether... Did you do what I think you did, Unicorn? Did, I, did you do what I think you did? Let's see. I think it's 14, Scribo. <laughs> That's actually interesting. Wow. That's actually not nice, by the way. Yeah, yeah let's go. Aren't the chests up here? No, they are not. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go. Wait. Why did you say blue, red? Is what's the guide who tells you the combination? That doesn't seem right. I'm a flail. That's kind of interesting. Or was that a remote hog fuck? So oh, here's the thing. I think in theory I could backtrack through here to get the switch before. I'm not. Sure. I don't think I can do this with ghosts actually. 
fell out, I don't know. What's with the hot scoop, indeed? I was actually considering going to the machine guy oh, from the other side instead. How did I despawn the enemies in here? In Blitzless that would be super useful. Because you barely have any armor and stuff does so much damage. Actually, I wonder whether in Glitchless it would be the most reasonable choice to just uh, make your characters, well, stay dead. To run through these areas. Thank you. How are you doing, sir? Thank you for supporting the channel. Eddie Mesmerizer just subscribed with Twitch Prime. I really appreciate that. I really do. How are you doing? And well, thank you so much. It means a lot to me, guys. <laughs> Zombies on the subway. That's some serious social commentary. Wow, I never thought about it that way. I guess. Now it's 15. That's a lot of people, by the way. So hopefully he does not lose Lunar Shield. Ow! Oh my god, that guy does a lot of damage. That guy does a lot of damage. I did not realize this guy did so much damage. I don't usually get hit at all. Because I have different methods of dealing with him. Oh, Lunar Boost. That's nice. That way I will never miss it again. He also deals more damage now. Which is not so nice. Lunar Boost is good. As long as he's not Lunar Shield, we are fine. That one. Lucid Barrier, I mean. Because Lucid Barrier is just mean. As in, you hear that ding noise every time I hit him? That is absorbing a ton of damage. But, for some reason, this guy has something like 1400 health. Basically, nothing for this time, uh, for this point in the game. This game is definitely one of the brightest, most colorful post-apocalypse games ever. I... agree, I guess? Kind of depends on what you define as post-apocalypse. It probably kind of fits here. You're fine. I see, thank you so much, Reddy. So here is one of the few places where I don't mind actually keeping the other two uh, characters alive because I need them to traverse the Grand Palace. This is the place where I still need them. I have to have the sprite and the girl in my party to get through this palace. So let's do that. The sprite will need some magic refills, but we can do that along the way. So... Let's get started. Casting spells. What are you doing? <laughs> the sprite is so used to just dying right away that he decided, well, I think I shouldn't be alive so long, right? 
L let me just do this for you. No, not now, right? Not now. And the actual explanation for this, what just happened now, is for some reason, Pigmeat characters have a super aggressive AI script and just go and hit all the enemies. Does Lucy Battery reduce X damage or nullify X attacks? Uh, it's at least X damage. I don't know about X attacks. I thought at some point it was X attacks as well, as in it's either X attacks or X damage. But I think at this point it's just X damage actually. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> the sprite just wanted a huge sword. Yep. I see. Take care, Eddy. Thank you for dropping by and have a nice evening. Thanks a lot. How did I get Kettlekin? Uh, I just hit him until he died. But the more accurate explanation was that... I just used the whip and hit him normally. Hydra was much more of a problem. Oh, how I did I get back to... No, I actually went through the normal way. I just decided, whatever, I'm not going to mess with shenanigans day and went the normal way. This is where I need the lady. Fun fact, at level 1 the lady has exactly 8 MP. Accidentally I leveled her up a bit too far, but I didn't feel like resetting over it. But this is the last time we need the lady. Technically I could get rid of her now. Sword orb. So after I pick up the sword orbs chest here, I can actually increase my sword orbs by doing one trip to the Mantis Ant. And I no longer have any use for the sprite or the girl, so if I happen to snowman them by accident, I would be okay with that. That's not nice. I have an idea that involves invisible characters and going to the back entrance. Uh, I... I don't think you need invisible characters, you just need to set it back and forth. Actually, I think you can go and kill the kettle. You actually can go into back entrance as soon as you... want. As soon as you get Flammy, I think, and get the kettlekin. That would be interesting, I wonder what that kind of effect that would have. Uh Right. I really don't like those guys here. I'm going to kill that wolf before I do anything else. Because he's really dangerous if he is just in the range of just hitting me. Because I'm going to use the Mitch Mallet, which reduces my defense heavily, to jump across this. I'd rather not uh, take any risks here. So, and showtime. I wonder whether this guy has played away a pretty healthy amount of defense. I wonder whether charging up the sword is worthwhile on him. It might be.
My personal definition is that the file needs to have all bosses beaten, as in you need to acquire all the orbs from the bosses on the specific file. That, is, that would be my definition. We could also say all natural orbs, weapon orbs, that are not in chests. From all I would say. I wonder how much damage that deals with just physical swings. Thirty-seven. Peck hound. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he didn't really have much of a choice with the censorship, I don't think. Alrighty, I will get a break time in uh, just about a second here. So, for anyone curious, Texas is super weak against barrels. So... Let's pretend we're a barrel. So, what I'm doing here is I'm letting Texas run out of magic just by standing here. Each one of those dispel spell casts costs 4 MP. The barrel makes me absolutely and completely invulnerable to everything she does. Because most of her attacks are just based on physical. Nat nature and the barrel blocks all of those. So, I'm going to take a short break. Be right back, guys. Very short break. Cheating? No, I'm just using a barrel. Barrels are awesome. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so short version is, I accidentally dropped my, what do you call that, sound graphics interface to the floor, and that ripped out the cables from the capture card and TV. But only the video cables, so we are fine, it's okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oopsie. Be right back.
Oh, and I'm back. That's kind of awkward. We live. Texas destroyed the universe. Yep. Texas is the most powerful mage in the entire universe. All right, she ran out of magic. Probably. At least I hope so. Yep, no more matching. Now we hit her. Until Lupin. Because she can't do anything. By the way, what do you want, guys? Blue? Or... Brown? I wonder if brown has more defense. 64. Or red. We have choices. Actually, it looks like red has less defense. Ah, uh, might, might just be variant. Might just be... Yeah, it's just variants. So... Red, blue... Or brown. Actually, my favorite color used to be brown as a kid. Just because, I don't know, I like the color. That's it. Nothing more fancy than that. Brown is Earth Elemental. Uh, technically there is a green-yellow one, I believe. But you never get to trigger that, because the conditions for uh, wind form are never met. The bloody ace one's blue. No one else says anything. I'm okay with that. Come on, blue, please. There we go. Oh yeah, if you run Hexas out of magic and then change her form into magic spell heavy flinging form well she can't do anything anymore which mana spirit is your favorite luna i think it's luna it's either luna or undini undini i really like the healing and luna is just overall the buffs are insane they have so much impact And we move on. Yay! Reaches level 33. Let's go. Moon's critical hit puff? Yeah, among that. That's one of the insane ones. That I would just really, really like. There we go. So. For anyone who was wondering what I did earlier to mech rider number 2, I'm going to be doing this to mech, neighbor, mech, my, mech rider number 3. The first time he is taking any action, he will cast Wall on himself. Wall, for anyone who is not aware, reflects spells from the cast, uh, well, back to the enemy, so to speak. And that includes buff spells, where he tries to cast speed up on himself whenever he has no buff. Wall, which reflects spells, is not considered to be a buff, which means he casts wall on himself as long as he does not have wall, as in wall has a certain amount of spell charges applied to it. As long as he does not have any wall charges left anymore, he will just straight up use wall again. And the second condition is, as long as he does not have a buff, he will cast a buff on himself, as long as he takes an action. And that's it. That's literally his entire AI script he will ever reach. If you deliberately bounce a buff off your own wall to him, 
he will start using wave cannon and plasma beam, stuff like that. Which is actually really, really dangerous. I mean, that's some of the highest physical damage attacks you find in this game. But you will never see them unless you deliberately, deliberately trigger them. Greetings, Cock and Balls. How are you doing? So, the other one is... What he tries to do is, he tries to get onto my vertical position, as in, at the beginning you saw him slowly slowly descend down on the screen, until he was at the very bottom of the arena. What he's trying to do is, he tries to continue going lower, because his condition for dashing across the screen is not met yet, as in, he cannot attack the boy yet, because he is, well, too high up on the screen. It just does not work for him. I wonder how much damage that deals. 29. I think charging up is better. So, he will never dash across the screen unless he is on the same uh, vertical level as the boy. But because I'm at the very bottom of the arena, he can never get there. His hitbox is just too large. He's too fat. So, I'm completely safe at the bottom of the arena here. Nothing can hurt me. As long as I don't accidentally go any step up, that is. I can lay... I can read that tech bit, yes. But I prefer keeping the chat in English in general. Just for reference. Um, the this boss could have been much harder with a different AI. Yes, he could have been much harder. <laughs> Cock and balls, thank you for... Subscribing with Twitch Prime. I really appreciate that, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. It just took one click. And there it is. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. So would the boss normally fight? Normally he would dash across the screen, just attacking you, using his wave beam cannon as long as he has a buff. But just because his AI script is so messed up, well, he never does that. Get up there and fight like a man machine. I don't think that would be terribly healthy. He has actually the potential to completely obliterate you if you're not careful. So, and I'm going to do two things. First, actually three things. First off, I'm buying more equipment. So I will be ready to roll out. Then, I need to get the mana sword early. And I'm going to do that by checking something real quick first. This one here works too. Uh, actually, I'm not going to go all the way to the mana sword early, because otherwise I would soft lock on the thumb gigas. Which would be rather awkward. So I need to check real quick here. How many sword orbs do I have? No orbs. I have plus one. I need the uh, thing here upgraded. This one here upgraded. All right, this is the Giga sword. I need to look this up real quick. Red palace chest. All right, one more. Which means I'm going to go through with one additional sword orb. And I will get this by doing the early game again. Unfortunately, I forgot to make a save at the early game, so this will take a little while. Save the game? Yes, please. By the way, I will not beat the 
splits. I can tell you that much already. Actually... No, it's okay. I will not beat the splits. Because the splits, I think, skip the mana fortress? I skip the pure lands? So that would be rather difficult to beat. So what I'm going to be doing here is known as the Mana Sword glitch or something like that. Where I just go to the Mantis Ant Arena, get the Mana Sword just from Mantis Ant. Because Mantis Ant spawns in his arena always, every single time. And after the fight you just gain an additional Sword Orb, which is rather convenient. Hey! I hope you like the emotes. Oh, thank you for the host, Radix. I appreciate that. Not sure why it doesn't show up. I almost reset here, just out of habit. But I actually have to play all the way up to Mantis End, which takes about four and a half minutes. I could save about three and a half minutes of those four and a half minutes if I only just thought about saving at the very beginning of the game. Also I will be taking additional steps because this is a boy solo challenge. Which means I am going to get rid of the sprite and the girl because I no longer have any need for them to open up passages. The boy will be able to provide all of that himself, without any trouble whatsoever. Let's see. Food box is empty, we require more food. Food box. Delicious taco. We have to get back. We? Sure, we are plural now. I am plural now. Plural? I can't spell. Spell? Talk! Good job. I really can't talk right now. Wee. Did we reset? Uh, no, we did not. I'm going to get a mana sword orb, or more specifically a sword orb additional to how many we already have. Which means, as soon as I defeat the Thunder Gigas, I will be getting the upgrade to the mana sword instead of to the Dragon Buster. <laughs> This is known as Mana Sword Glitch. What it does is I'm using a corrupted save file to save warp into the Mantis Ant Arena. To get an additional sword orb. So, I just went to the Mantis Ant, open a new file, load into it. And I need him to kill the sprite. Don't attack him! Don't attack him, guys. Actually, it doesn't really matter. It actually does not really matter. 
Okay, the sprite should die like this. That's okay. Let's actually desire it. There we go. Right down. I just, even though the girl already leveled up by accident, I still want to keep it through that they should not do anything and always be defeated during boss fights. You can try that. Bam. Alrighty. We defeat the Mantis and the second time. He always gives you sword orb. He always spawns in the arena. Wouldn't that mean? I now can upgrade the sword to the Dragon Buster, which is what you could only usually do after you defeat the Thunder Gigas. But I can do that now already. Fun, by the way, fun fact, if you do the glitch where you make the boy leave the party, this cuts in here will glitch out and it doesn't work, and you're soft locked. I figured it out the hard way. Hey Dark and Dark, how are you doing sir? Every sister Reaper is used to that. She will soon not be here anymore, don't worry. We are going to take care of that in a second. Actually, quite literally. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's an appropriate reaction, it seems. Um... So, I now need to equip them with slightly a little bit of equipment, which makes them just barely vulnerable to getting hit, but not killed, by one of the green slimes. That's the idea anyways. So I actually need to heal them up here. Two, three, four. Alrighty. Blue slime, okay. So, here is where the magic begins. You should... There we go. Wait, what? That does that's that's not how this is supposed to work at all. Alright, I need to real quick replenish my items. I actually don't have enough armor equipment uh, pieces to do that, do I? Fascinating. Alright. Needs to get more HP there, otherwise this is not going to work. He needs to get Wow, not killed, please. Let's try to let I get the sprite. What? What is that range? <laughs> what is that attack range? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. The sprite takes too much damage. Hey, there we go. I can do that with the lady now. Ah, oh, shoot. Don't kill her. This is a bit awkward. What is that attack range, though? <laughs> I need more basic equipment. Alright. I need to get basic equipment here. It's not going to work like this. So, 
the boy is going to equip all the best armor that he can get and we will get very basic armor for now So golem ring, golden vest for both of them, and I think just two raccoon caps. Then I will fill up my inventory with the raccoon caps as well. Hello, 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 hello. So I will need a lot of equipment to throw away. I might as well stock up right here. Actually, technically speaking, I should not have equipped all the way because I will want to get a helmet from the Griffin Hand sometime. The Griffin Helmet. I think this is actually a perfect setup right here, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, it works. Not perfect. Be sure to replenish the Cups of Wishes. Alright, you equip a helmet, this thing, and this thing. You equip a helmet, this thing, and... Actually, you equip this thing. That way you are not going to be in the way as much. I guess that kind of works. Okay. The equipment that I equip on them and then lose subsequently, I will never retrieve, as in it will be stuck in my inventory. I cannot remove it anymore. I think. This one anyways. So, let's try this again. Hello from the other side. Hello to the other side. So, let's see. Wow, that's not how this is supposed to work at all. Let's try this with the sprite. Wow, he does not have enough defense. Alright, I need to equip them slightly higher defense values. Uh, this probably will actually just work. Wow, could you please frosty her? Really, guys? There we go. Wow. Well, that did not work at all again. This was so easy last time. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Oopsie. I think I need to wait a bit longer. Until the numbers almost disappear. Yeah, alright, I need to wait a little bit longer until the numbers almost disappear. Lady is gone. Lady's gone now. And the sprite is gone. Goodbye! Cruel world. We are now... Alone. Has no chill. Ares has no chill. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. That's, that's interesting. I greeting is Devly. How was it going? Uh, where did I want to go? This one works fine.
That is so weird, yep. Why did the girl level up? I killed uh, accidentally one Emberman. Wow. I was in the Dark Temple and I did not save a long time before that, so I decided to just go with it. Oh, oh actually they un unequipped the boy's weapon. Hey, he has the Dragon Buster now. Do -do -do. So what happened? Alrighty. What happened there was basically... I removed the other two characters from my party through a glitch that is known as Snowman Abduction. What essentially happens during the Snowman Abduction glitch is... I think Crow can explain it better, but the gist of it is... I have no idea from where I need to go here. I know where from to go from the desert. Probably should just go save in the desert instead. There we go. So the gist of uh, the snowman abduction glitch is that... Did I just save all the able's other way fell? I may have. Oh well. The gist of the snowman abduction glitch is... Snowmen don't have a pushing animation, as in pushing enemies around animation type thingy. And somehow, if you push enemies around anyways, the stuff gets super scrambled, and it can't remove characters from your party for some strange reason. And that's how the snowman abduction glitch is essentially... well, the way it is. Just works in rather wondrous and weird ways, doesn't it? Silence. I will kill you. I wonder... How? So, what I'm going to be doing here, guys, is I need to level for the mana fortress, more specifically for uh, the mana beast. And the way I'm going to level is I'm going to play the odds and also try to get a griffin helmet, which is the best headgear for the boy that you can get. So what I'm going to be doing here is I just level up the boy simultaneously with trying to find a griffin helmet. Which should help me tremendously in uh, surviving against the mana beast. I will be going up to level 44 maximum if I don't find a griffin helmet by then. I will move on earlier if I find a griffin helmet approximately when I reach 450 HP. Enjoy the music in the meantime, but if you need to go to the bathroom, uh, do some urgent business or something else, now is a good time to do so, because we are going to be here for a while. You're well, enjoying your weekend and your stream. Thank you, you see that. And I'm glad you're enjoying your weekend and the stream. Okay, let's try level 5 attack next time. Whether that works better, otherwise I'm just going to revert to level 3, because that's enough for two hits afterwards. What are the gro gro drop rates of Griffin Helmet? I actually don't know. It's not that low. It happens once in a while. I mean, it might just be not that low for my standards, but... Was not might not be applicable to the usual player. Well, that was awkward. So first of all, you need to get a chest drop, which is I think something like one in sixteen. Correct me if I'm wrong. As in, it's not that low of a chance to drop a chest, but also not terribly high. 
And then you need to get the rare drop from the chest, which I think the common drop is a fairy walnut. And also not a trap chest. The trap chest is a separate check compared to uh, seeing whether... Which item you get. So the trap is actually not part of the item rule. It's literally whether you get a trap or not. That's the trap rule. And the higher your utility is, the less chance of a trap you have. So that's why I have the wolf's armband. Which gives me plus 5 agility. Sword reaches level 6. I'm actually going to level up the whip here as well. It's actually kind of rare to not get a chest so far. At least from my standards. Maybe I've just been super lucky the recent few times. 2.5%. Alright. Nice crit. So I want to have, I think, level 4. Actually, level 3 whip is fine. No, 4 is better. Oh no, I didn't mean to change fields. Oh, thank you, Crow. Crow is the guy who has all the information tables. So just trust him. That works. Six eight percent interesting, but yeah. Either way, I need to level up to have a reasonable shot at the mana beast, anyways. I might as well do that here. Mm. Red drops is one in one hundred forty six kills. Which, I don't think we are going to reach quite 146, but we are not going to be far off, I don't think. So there's a reasonable chance of getting it. fly, buddy, even though you're technically a bird type, I guess. I think I'm just going to kill the lower two guys instead of trying to kill the others. Sword actually does less damage than the whip. Uh, not in theory, but it's not far off. Hey, ev they look like e footstools. Evil footstools. Yep, very evil footstools. Indeed. Very evil ones. So what other, other weapon could I level up that I may want to need to charge? None really. I'm fine with the sword in the end. And the whippy is just a secondary weapon that will be useful. I could technically level up the bow, but I don't think that's valuable. Just because basic attacks on the axe beak are going to be fine with just a standard bow. 
No chest so far. Nimbus Chamber. I mean, one big difference between this and the casual run is I already have the money for all the basic equipment to have reasonable defense against those guys here. Whereas in a casual run, you will be farming here for a while until you have enough money to afford the armor you can buy from Nico. And greetings, Kadath. How are you doing, sir? Oh, great indeed. Nice crits. I remember getting a griffin helmet on the girl and being disappointed that I couldn't use it. Bedtime, take care, Life Anomaly. Thank you for dropping by and rest well. I'm confused. Leap flower? That's kind of irritating. Thank you for waking me up. That is actually pretty nice. Actually, I'm going to grind until I find one chest from those guys. First one. Maybe. I will probably stick to the level 44 thing. Probably. We'll see. By the way, if I open a chest and it's a doom trap, it could instantly kill me. I would need to redo this grind. So I kind of hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> and thank you, Noramis. Appreciate that. Rude. I had so many more chests last time. Or did I just farm that much longer? I don't remember. One of a chance for Dune Trap to instant kill? Yeah. But I need to get a trap first. My agility grows higher and higher, so the chance of getting a trap is lower and lower. Which is nice. Just. He one-shot in this arena with beginner's armor, yep. I hear you. 
I didn't quite have beginner's armor at the time, but Nico's exp was so expensive. Basically, I could only fight a few of those and then I had to retreat because they were just too strong. Speed up, collect hopping talents, collect talents, RPG logic. Naturally. I mean, those are feet. Eventually, your helmet has to fall to your foot if you don't have a held head. Right? Makes sense. Almost, anyways. Another chance to be instant killed? No, you need to get a trap first. The chance of trap is decreasing as we speak. Basically be by virtue of me leveling up. Sixty-four agility weight. I thought agility basically gave me a flat reduction. With being a possible chest. Uh How much agility do I have? 50. I can go up to 55. So do you want to tell me that me equipping the wolf armland doesn't help me at all? Hmm. One more level, by the way. And we are over here. I really don't think charging up to level 7 is efficient here, but it's fancy. No drops at all. Oh. I wonder whether getting my other characters kidnapped has something to do with this. That would be rather weird, but hey, it can be. By the way, did you ever notice that you push enemies way faster if you're charging up than when you don't? Actually, no, when you're charging up, you push enemies the same speed as usual compared to not charging up. So you actually move faster in pushing enemies when charging up a weapon. Wow, miss. Uh oh. I'm going to heal up here for safety. Mana Holy Land would be literal here. Three. Actually, it's one more level now. They don't make games like this anymore. I disagree. It's just kind of a bit more difficult to find them, since there are way more games to choose from. There are still people that make games like this, but it's not the big studios anymore. Hey, Hulk, thank you for the good luck. Can I use that? And thank you for the host, sir. Appreciate that. I'm not worthy of a single chest so far. Fascinating. Bolt kill. Yeah. 
That did not work out. On the bright side, my character is now sufficiently strong enough to stand against all the in bosses in this area. As soon as I level up here, I should be done. But I'm really surprised I don't get a single chest. As in, none at all. None at all. I get it if it's rare, but none? I had so many chests last time. I'm done here. Okay. Reach level 44. Target level I designed. We are going to move on now. I'm really surprised. I wonder about that too, Crow. I really do. Because there was not a single chest. I mean... I had about 10 to 15 chests last time. There was one griffin helmet in there. Yeah, exactly. This is so much below the expected number, it's ridiculous. I wonder whether saving and resetting might help in this case for the chest drops. Oopsie. Oop, none at all. Wow. This is Quite fascinating, I have to say. So now we get to one of the more ridiculous boss fights in the entire game. My defense should be sufficiently high that his physical attacks will do either nothing, like Patrick I guess, or not much. Like, the okay, case just general physical attack. As long as I don't get pygmy, that is. This will deal a little bit of damage. And that's okay. This damn worm. This worm is a monster, without compare. This is Earthlight number 3, I believe. I'm going to count Earthlights. So the lady actually has a lot of trouble beating this guy because her physical defense is not good enough to reliably not get hit by this guy. So she has to keep her buffs up and then somehow attack him. Boy just charges up until he has enough, and then he hits him for a chunk, good chunk of damage. Do, 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 do. I just need to pay attention that I don't unleash my attack when he is casting the spell, because he is invulnerable during it, or I get knocked back and can't attack either. Oh, 
I mean, maybe I just got ex extraordinarily unlucky with the chest. Hey, B Dragon, how are you doing, sir? Good evening. I barely dare to attack the dragon worm because most of the time my attacks will get interrupted by his spells and stuff. I mean, it's really nice to have this much physical defense. Just not having to worry about that at all. Unless I get pigmate, that is. Which I think can still happen, but I'm not sure about that. I need him to come and cast Petrify or Balloon Ring when he enters. Okay, that kind of works too. I mean, in the meantime, I can just drink something. Then try to hit him again as soon as I'm ready. So, I want him to enter with Petrify Gas or Balloon Ring. Not Earth Slide. Ah, that would have been a nice get up attack there. It worked out. Wow, he just interrupted me there. I uh, unleashed at the wrong moment. Very good, glad to hear that. Alright, that was attack number 4 I believe. Yes, I think 3600 HP, so... Four more attacks with this should do the trick. But we are halfway there, in a sense. With a bit of luck, it's a bit further than that. Um, this is just a boy only challenge. Another category more of a meme? Sure, we can say that. I just like stupid challenges. This is one of them. He will eventually run out of magic to cast his nose lights all the time. Going to be nice. So this is attack number six. Going to heal up again. I think I have not used a single honey yet. Or royal jam, I guess. Wow, that actually hit him. So if I'm lucky, this next attack is going to kill him. So he is not as much of a difficulty with this high level and equipment as much as it is just annoying. Win. Not an axe orb. And we move on! It's so strange, only having one character through these areas. Alrighty. One down. Oh, I forgot to split. You don't, have not seen Sprite Only? I've tried Sprite Only at multiple occasions. I think I finished one run. No, come back here! A little ring. Alright. So here's a basic issue with dragons. They love to go off screen. Which is a big issue 
because when they come on screen, they are usually above height uh, terrain, which means I can literally not hit them. And this is why I leveled up the whip. The whip is not a ranged weapon, but it allows me to hit him from a distance when he comes flying in. Essentially all dragons have the same basic concept. They fly in, cast a spell and then just fly away again. Which for regular weapons, if I'm too close to him, he will start casting a spell and be invulnerable during his spell cast subsequently. Which is kind of an issue if you try to actually hit him. As in, an vulnerable enemy does not bode well for you to actually kill him. Surprise. Your favorite boss fright, I see. It's pretty neat, I like it. So I need to replenish my... ...things real quick. Four, five, seven, one... I actually don't need those anymore, so I... I literally can't use them. Can I? Oh, it's curious. Wow. One of the hidden characters is now on this one. Oh, okay. Freeze breath, that's bad, because that just turns me into a snowman. There's not much I can do about that. By the way, Crow, I have something for you. You're still here. Uh... Oh, you don't know that? You actually can't hit dragons with projectile weapons. It literally doesn't work. Let me demonstrate. You literally can't hit dragons like Vampire or Buffy projectiles. It just straight up flies through them. Oh, what? 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 You can hit them? Are you serious? I can't be that unlucky while testing, can I? Whoa. Well, that changed the metagame. Yes, of course it would be way easier. If I could charge up the bow, that is, and actually hit him with it. Now that changes everything. Oh, well, guess what? I'm going to be tra training up the boom uh, bow soon. No, I was under the firm impression that you cannot hit dragons with protector weapons because you can't hit Buffy, you can't hit uh, the Great Viper with it. It's literally impossible on those guys. However, on the dragons, I may have may have done that test while I was still under the impression that, or where I still didn't know that when they are flying in, then just before they stand still, the dragons that is, they will be invulnerable to any attack just because they are casting a spell at that point. This is why I leveled up the whip. This here is the reason why I leveled up the whip. So yeah, it's likely that I just did not realize that they are invulnerable while just stand standing still. That's why I couldn't hit them. Thank you, bro. Buff is different? No. But what do you do against Great Viper? You literally can't hit Great Viper. 
we project our weapons if possible. You can actually hit uh, Dragon Worm, I believe, with projectiles. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, come on. That's rude. We'll have to be in melee range. I think that's the issue. Oh yeah, while he is attacking me, I cannot hit him. This was just too short-ranged. Fascinating. So this changes things, by the way. Because the Red Dragon was the most ridiculous boss to kill. Because he was constantly hovering over high ground. Which I could not do anything about. Or I thought anyways. Projectile weapons are literally built to deal with enemies on high ground. As you can see, that arrow just pro uh, passed right through him while he was casting a spell. I'm actually going to try and lure him to the side here. I think I have a better shot at him now. If I do this. I do. Freeze breath. Rather than not get hit by that. Alright, I'm going to le be leveling up a bow soon. Yes. So what's faster? Man. Actually, I can do this. We'll see whether this helps. Doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, Crow. One thing I wanted to say earlier, I remember now. I uh, go into my vault and check the Hydra uh, light. There was something rather odd that I happened to discover there. Kill him with a barrel. <laughs> so, for some reason, during the Hydra fight, I actually used a healing item on myself, then I used a barrel right after, as in before the healing item took effect. And I managed to land double hits on the Hydra. It was rather it was rather weird. To say the least. Bow value, indeed. I want to have level 1 or 2, that's fine, on bow. 
So where do we go and level this? Just in here? Balance could be a bit annoying, but... Could be fine still. The one of the biggest issues about the bow is just that you only hit one enemy ever. Aside from it being rather awkward to use. Because it has such a long wind up type until you just start shooting. Maybe it would be better for me to use a javelin instead, but the javelin is not upgraded. Always as upgraded as it gets. Which orb did I just get now, by the way? When is the next bow orb, or when was the last bow orb for that matter? Snow dragon. Oh. I could go and upgrade the bow. I might actually just do that. In fact, I will do this. Let's go and upgrade the ball. What is the deal of hits that don't register in this game? Are they blocked? Uh, yeah, basically. The more specific term is evasion, as in they are evaded. Uh, bosses, or specifically enemies that do have evasion, as in usually they either have evasion or they don't. On the baseline they have approximately 40% chance to block your attack or evade your attack. And there is no tell about it, it's just kind of nothing. Which is not so good design, obviously, as you undoubtedly can tell. Just curious whether this would be better anyways. Actually, I would have had to go and pick up stuff later. Yeah, as you can tell, that's an undoubtedly not terribly great design. Also, I'm going to be resetting and restarting here. Just for the sake of... Hey, maybe that helps with the chest problem. But yeah, baseline about 40%. The higher you level up, the less evasion chance enemies will have. At this level, I have approximately a 25% chance to miss against enemies that have evasion. As in, those uh, grey pebblers, they have evasion. I believe those guys here also have evasion. Sometimes you just strictly don't deal enough damage to punch through the enemy's defense, if they have really high defense, which looks basic, almost the same as evasion, with the difference that they actually have evasion animation, which is ironic because they are not actually evading, they are just having too high defense and that's why you didn't hit them. But yeah, level 2 bow it is going to be. Might as well level it up right here. <laughs> Welcome, Wish. Nice to hear that. I hope you're having a nice evening. So, you grow mana 2 evade is broken? Yeah, you could say that. It doesn't work. Also, the shields are broken. Heal up. I think level 2 bow is going to be sufficient. But yeah, in Seeker of Mana, it is actually evasion that works. It just doesn't tell you about it. Ironically, the first boss who has evasion is the wall face, which is a wall. And you just kind of wonder, why does it not hit him? Am I not standing in the correct position? But really, what happens 99% of the time is he evades. Or, which is the other big or, uh, bosses also have invulnerability while casting spells. Which means, 
if you just happen to hit the boss while he is casting a spell, you will also not get any tell on whether why you didn't hit or why it did not connect with his attack at all. Nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. Like those here, for example, it's clearly that they are evading, as in 25% of the time, I think. Maybe less, at this point. But they are evading a whole lot, and I still don't get any chests, at all. This is super strange. Oh, <laughs> I wonder whether the missing NPCs, or the missing characters, the chests are actually getting loaded into the character slots instead. That would be really, really strange. That would be super strange, actually. Hey, Ryu, thank you for the good luck, sir. Good morning. I hope you slept well. Probably slept. Hopefully slept. Things never bothered me. It did kind of bother me. I remember getting really confused about uh, wall face. Just kind of when we did say, hey, let's not use magic because the magic is way too strong. And just did everything with physical attacks. Just kind of the wall face was. What is going on? It didn't work. Or did it? I don't know. Real bell. Nice. Glad to hear that. Okay, skill up. Arrow? Arrow reaches? Next level? That's kind of strange. I feel like the text box is really messed up too. It's bow and arrow. Stuff is not quite right here. It's not just because the characters are missing. Actually, it might be because the characters are missing that stuff is really messed up here. Play for your fire? Yes, please. Let's go. Arrow. Yeah. That doesn't seem right at all. <laughs> I feel like I really broke the game by removing characters that are supposed to be here. By the way, for anyone wondering, yes, this is console. Just in case you were wondering. Not even bow, just arrow. Oh. 94. So this guy does not have a whole lot of... Magic defense, so... Yeah, physical defense, so what I do is I just... Throw arrows at him until he dies. It's approximately 29 hits until... He dead. He dead? He dead. Unless I crit, which counts for two. So this is approximately three hits so far. Four. Oh, Firebook here lowers my damage. So this is going to be a bit more now. Five, yeah. Fire bouquet attacks only count for two third. Six. Seven. I don't think I can actually hit him up there. Try to jump down. It might actually be worth charging up just because how how frantic his movement is. And 
I don't really get that many opportunities to hit him, so I just make sure I hit him with the charge attack here. Okay, I need to replenish barrels now. I want one pixel to the left. As in literally one frame step to the left. There this works. I figured that would be the case. I need to be careful about that. So the... Essentially remove characters still have their equipment equipped and I switch around the equipment they have equipped in a weird way. And I cannot just straight up equip the stuff they have. I need to switch it around. Otherwise it's just not good. Hey Scarsnickers, how are you doing sir? Throw arrows? Yep, I'm throwing arrows. At least seven. I don't even know how much damage that deals, let's see. 56, that's not a whole lot. Okay, that did not work. I needed to be more patient there. But yeah, this guy would be a nightmare with melee weapons. So, he used bow and arrow. That's actually pretty nice that I have it upgraded to. Also, lava wave animation takes forever. <laughs> Ever and ever and ever and ever. They are taking vacation indeed. They are just really tired of driving around the world. So the boy just went ahead and said, Okay, you can stay home. I'm going to do the rest here. No problem. No problem. After they did some work, I guess. Good night. But yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we could. Where am I comparing against? Yeah, alright. The current boy only record does not do all bosses, so... There's no way I can keep up with the end game of it. But that's alright. So now we get to the biggest menace of them all. We are doing a boy and girl only challenge. At least up on... Till now, hitting him was a true nightmare, but if bow and arrow actually work, this might change the entire ordeal around. Don't move! But the issue is, with melee weapons to hit him, he needs to be not above high ground. All those little obstacles you see around in the arena, those are high ground. Uh, Places. As in, if he just hovers somewhere above them, he is considered to be on high ground. Which means it's impossible for me to hit him. But, apparently... It works. Apparently it works with a bow and arrow. I could have bet that you cannot hit dragons with projectile attacks. I was wrong. I'm so glad I was wrong by the way. And I'm so glad Crow pointed that out and I wanted to show it to him.
Hey, I can do this. As long as I hit, that is. Deep ring is okay. Yago is black magic to send him to the void. Deep ring is okay. He's going to go zigzag again, isn't he? Yep. Zigzag, as in when he goes diagonally, he seems to be way faster. It's a bit irritating. Magic rope, can you imagine? There's actually one boss where you can use a magic rope in the room. It's weird. That cross is called the Dragon Worm, it works. Rather strange. Okay. I never want to get hit by that. Because as soon as I'm engulfed in flames, I am in big trouble. Okay. All those hits that I'm landing, he's currently above high ground, which means normal physical attacks could not actually hit him. As in, this is the reason why the barrels don't hit right now. Snowman terrorists kidnap them, something like that. And greeting us to corrupt the E. Doing quite excellent. How are you doing? Can you do something imbecile like changing solar character after each boss? Uh, technically, you could, but it would be an awful lot of work. You would need to do some arbitrary event execution to be able to recruit the sprite or girl back into your party. I think that would work anyways. I'm not even sure. Exploder. That's the first time I did that. Oh. Oh, oh I have no... Oh. I have no more chocolate. I actually don't use it at all. Hey, Sinothon. Good afternoon. Thank you for the host. And greetings, Valley. How are you doing, sir? How is it going? So as soon as he starts casting this dragon, I can no longer hit him. This is probably by a thought. Protect us just like straight up play through him. I mean, it kind of makes sense. But thankfully, it's not the case. Hey, Trustin, thank you for the host. I appreciate that. I need to go up a little bit higher. Be able to hit him. There's actually no real point in delaying getting hit by this. Uh, as I said, I need to be careful. Um, I'm not going to trash anymore from here. I figured. 
you can have this one. Let's see. I should have zero zeros. Oh, I really wanted to replenish the candy too. I guess I might have accidentally replenished other stuff instead. Let's see, this should work to replenish candy. Right? Right, hold on. We replenish candy. There we go. Oh well. As much of a long fight that was, that was still easier than the fights I did before. Is there a way to trick the game into thinking you are at the beginning of the game? Uh, it works in Paper Mario, for example. Um, there are certain events that you can set backwards a little bit, but nothing grand or specific like that. Hey, thank you. Repelled magic off the barrier. And gave me defender instead. That is really convenient. Hey, Atheist, thank you for the host, sir. What were you doing over there, if I may ask? I hope you're doing well. Um. Thunderbolt. Hey, good evening. Good evening, Atheist. How are you doing? What were you doing? Uh, Blitz Breath. I want to deflect with a Mal. Playing some World of Warcraft. I see. That's nice. That might be bad. Alright, it just kind of worked out. At least I deal some decent damage against this guy now. That's a big plus. Thank you. And I'm going to deal even more decent damage now, as long as I don't have to use a barrel. Because it just increased my damage output by 70% of the base damage weapon, uh, base weapon damage. And the second time, thank you. This boss music's pretty terrible. Well, that's your opinion. I actually really like it. I feel like it sets the mood quite fine. Eleven damage, that's not a whole lot. I expected more. Also, let me check the thing real quick. I just received something. I think, probably. Hey, Trustin just donated five dollars. And with the comment, I remember I asked you if I could tip a while ago, but you didn't have a tip option. Glad you have it now. I see. Thank you very much, Trustin. I really appreciate that. That might kill me. Oh, I'm surviving it. I survived it. The boy has so much health, he survived the Blitz Breath. That's ridiculous. Either way, thank you so much, Rustin. Really, really do appreciate that. That was too early. You take that back? No, it's an opinion. If you subjectively don't like a piece of music, that's just how it is. Hey, 
You never figured out what the Thumb Thunder Saber does. It actually... let's put it this way. For anyone who does not know, Sabers, Elemental Sabers, don't actually work entirely in this game. They do their special effect, like the Frost Saber adds the chance to snowman an enemy, or the Earth Saber adds the chance of petrification an enemy, and so on. So the Thunder Saber, for example, literally does nothing. Aside from increasing your base damage. So all the Sabers do that, however. As in all the Sabers, increase your base damage by 10% per uh, spell level. Which is not, it's not a whole lot, but it's noticeable. You deal a little bit more damage. But the big deal about the elemental sabers is that the, well, element just doesn't work. Also here I will get access to the mana sword, by the way. But, uh, as I said, the big deal is really that the element just strictly does not work. Which means... Also, this is the last sword orb. I will be running through this again after I upgrade the sword. So yeah, instead of you dealing thunder elemental damage or wind elemental damage with the thunder saber, you just deal normal neutral elemental damage. So the only benefit is you get from thunder saber specifically is you gain a little bit of an increased damage, which all sabers provide you with. So there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to ever use an elemental add thunder saber. Also, guys, we have a mana sword. Let's see. Like, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to use Thunder Saber. None. I think I need to replenish. I'll redo this, otherwise the mana sword is not going to get active. So I will deal a bit more damage now. By a bit, I mean a whole lot more. Like, a whole lot more. So, let's uh, break the saber stone. Uh, Frost Saber gives you a chance to snowman enemies with approximately an 80% chance success rate to turn them into happy little snowmen, which you can no longer interact with until they unfreeze. Um, what's the second one? Stone Saber gives you a chance to petrify enemies, which actually does more than just uh, petrification. It petrifies enemies, you can still hit them, although your AI control cactus will ignore the enemies at that point. But you can still hit them repeatedly, and that's quite nice. On top of that, whenever you petrify an enemy, they lose 50% of their current HP. Which is quite a big deal, since you can essentially one-shot a lot of enemies just by equipping a petrification saber. And then the next one is... Do -do -do. The next one is a uh, wind saber, which does virtually nothing. We have then fire saber, which gives you a chance to engulf enemies in flames, kind of like the other status effects, approximately 80% chance. You can still hit them, they take damage over time effect too. Defense down. That's really unhappy. That's a nice crit though. Where's my grounds at? Hey, stupid nicknames. How are you doing, sir? No, oh, alrighty. The mana sword. I'm going to hit this guy. 
a few times. Wow, he does a lot of physical damage. Bam! I'm glad I got to save. So this is the mana sword glitch, a uh, mana sword early glitch, and it's pretty handy because the mana sword has about twice as much attack damage compared to any other weapon you have at all. Because you're not supposed to have it just like that. I what I did is I essentially went and got an additional sword orb, which allows me to. Uh, upgrade the mana sword or the sword once a uh, level higher than what is usually possible. Also the mana sword I think is the only sword who has a 100% hit chance. I think it's a 100 anyways. Either way, it has an increased hit chance, so no longer miss enemies. As long as they are not invulnerable due to casting and vulnerability and such. The Frost Giga's Ice Saber against you, does this increase the damage? No, it actually increases it. If Petrified does 50% of the damage, how does it one-shot enemies? Um, you, the Petrification effect takes place before your damage numbers show up. So if you deal 50 damage to an enemy who has 100 HP, and you Petrify him, you will one-shot him. Looked into the battle site multi-attack, you were missing out by merely sliding across the Hydra as you did. If you slide directly into him, you get 4 to 5 attacks in. What? Whoa. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Can he do that on an AI controlled character who has a charge? Whoa, hang on guys. This does not look right, guys. <laughs> it does not look right at all. Uh, <laughs> I've not seen, I've never been here uh, with just one character. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I'm so lucky you found such good help. <laughs> it's like a dream, more so than usual. Uh, soft lock or not? No, it's the cutscene is still going, it's not soft lock yet. Now see the power of the mana fortress. I not see anything. Uh And no, to our knowledge there is no way to unlock the mana sword early glitch in suite. Well, maybe with arbitrary code execution. Hey, it didn't soft lock so far. I think the boy is having hallucinations. Yep. I mean, he has been followed by two ghosts almost the entire trip so far, so what do you expect? The power of the Mana Fortress. The power to destroy reality. I should have narrated that, shouldn't I?
<laughs> oh, this is fascinating. Seren. Sword power at maximum. Actually, it's over one over maximum. Once the sword power at maximum scroll types up, scroll types up is when you get plus one. Battle pygmy and Google all reset your stun if you had to chain charge when it gets set. I see. Interesting. But that might have some applications for solo character challenges. Thank you very much, Crow. That is really interesting information, actually. I might just use that against uh, Red Slime. Sorry, I'll be okay. I've got a lot to live up to. We've got a job to do. And he is hearing still the voices in his head. They have been here since the beginning. They've been here. Accompanying him, helping him through his tough troubles. Through his, through his troubled times. They will stay with him. Until he finally manages to get all the way through. And defeat evil. Just himself. Voices. This is his head. Let's get this going. Not pressed at what? Now it will go back to the rusted sword. Actually, no, it wouldn't. Or would it? I don't think so. No, not mistaken. Actually, I'm not sure whether that works with the sword. If you over upgrade a weapon, it will become the next weapon, which I think is the boomerang in this case, if I'm not mistaken. Let's actually check whether I can upgrade the sword. You actually, I did not skip the girl and sprite. I removed them from the party after they were no longer useful. To be more specific. I don't think this is called schizophrenia, by the way. I think this is what you call multiple personality disorder. MPD. Actually, it might be. I don't know. I have no clue, actually. Oh, let's just go. Mana Fortress awaits. Please mind your language, Corrupty. Not a fan of that. This is going to be so weird. This is the first time I've actually done an actual solo character run all the way towards the end. I think those guys drop a ring, potentially. At least if they drop anything. I have not seen any enemies drop anything recently. This uh, music here is amazing. I agree. Oh, I can still use this. This music is really, really good. I think it just tried to absorb something that doesn't exist. Maybe it's because it was interrupted? I don't actually remember. So let's see. Um, do I have... I did not buy chocolate. Whatever. I'm just going to use a fairy walnut here in case I get the opportunity to do so. I'm actually going to. Oh no! Rude.
No, for Buffy, I cannot hit him while he's floating up there. As in, it literally just straight up doesn't work. So, I'm going to wait. Until he comes back down. I'm standing here in a corner. Because that makes it easy for me to... See stuff. He's really spazzing out right there. Let's actually do this. Hang on. Okay, that did not work. Ow. So Buffy gets really toasted just by virtue of me having a super strong sword and a pretty overleveled character, at least for my standards. Alright, good night, Buffy. We are done here. Do you know if there is a level 9 charge attack with a sword or does. Uh, no, it does not. There's not. There is no level 9 charge attack for the sword. There is actually no level 9 charge attack for any weapon for that matter. I think the highest is level 8. After 8 it goes back to normal. Arrow sliding into in 1C. Maybe in... <laughs> if it wasn't a glitch, it might have an application in glitchless scroll. In 1C, if you go the glitchless um, fight route against a mana beast, it might have. That would be rather interesting. I'm actually going to try this on the mana at uh, wrestling right now. I think that might have interesting results. Projectiles? Oh, I guess. Wow. 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 Stop it, Redsline. Holy smokes. Can't he do anything else but just spam massive drain? Oh my god. Redsline, please. Redsline, please. He's a monster. By the way, he, ran he never runs out of magic. So there's that. That did uh, quite a bit of a uh, damage there. That's neat. But it's also kind of dangerous. Thinking about it. But yeah, that's a lot of attacks at the same time. That's pretty neat.
I'm in big trouble. I actually can't replenish my things at all. I couldn't open the menu. Wow. That's a first. I might have to go back and restock if I need to heal here. I don't want to use that. I can't replenish it because I can't move. I'm basically at the mercy of threats that I'm not chain casting acid rain all the time. That's kind of how this works. Alright, got him. You don't understand what's going on with the inventory juggling. So, apparently I just managed to find a new glitch. Oh, sword level 8. E. Apparently I managed to find a new glitch here. So what I'm doing is, I'm using a healing item on my character, and then I use a barrel afterwards, right after. Uh, what that does is, the barrel, whenever you equip a barrel, for some reason it attacks just a weird hitbox around you. Don't ask me why that is, that's just what it does. It's kind of like an attack in itself. And what it does, if you use an item, just before using a barrel, apparently you attack about 5 to 6 or 7 or something like that times at the same time and just attack a lot of damage there. So what I did is I, well, did a lot of damage just by virtue of using a barrel. After using a healing item. I think this is not going to replenish the basic things. Let's see really quick. Yep, that's not replenished. Those are replenished though. What I'm doing here is I refill my inventory by using a, a position dependent glitch. Then equip an armor item and throw it away. Now I have zero barrels in my inventory again, which means I can use them eight times total. Hi. So weird running through this with just literally one character. No ghosts, nothing else, just boy. Ow. Not being so rude. Also, I'll hit you. I'm not going to mess with those guys while they have Stone Saber equipped. They petrify you and you're dead. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might have application in all bosses, Crow. Actually, probably not. Did I oh, I did forget to split. Thank you.
I see, I was actually wondering about that crow because I've seen that before. Is this running on the emulator? No, this is actual console. <laughs> and yes, I agree, even the bugs of this game are awesome. They make it actually quite spectacular. Be unintentional that the red line doesn't use MP. It may be. I'm actually wondering whether this will have any specific effect. Or? No, it's so. Oh well. Not like that, anyways. Let's see. Maybe you can't get the headband to work and just play around with it. Uh, this should be fine. Fine. We have... oh! Oh, interesting. Don't put him up there. Don't put him up there. Hey, high spirits! Thank you for the host, sir. And good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a you're having a lovely evening. Welcome to the finale of the Solo Boy Challenge, where we figured out a new glitch on the fly, and I'm just using it right now to deal tons of damage. So what I'm using is I use a healing item. That has a healing effect, and then I just use a bow right after. That's it. Oh, don't attack you early. Oh, you can actually change directions with this kind of thing? Interesting. Ouch. Please don't pick me. me. I consider that to be rather rude. So we use a barrel again. We'll take a ton of damage. by virtue of me using a barrel on top of him. So strange. But it works. Oysters. Come down here. Oh, this might not be a good idea at all. I need to use a barrel. Otherwise this could be rather dangerous. So, we have the... Lich, headbang glitch going on here. I use a healing item on myself and then I use a barrel. And look at the damage. Not that much, actually. But I have to admit, guys, I'm actually kind of scared of doing this right now. <laughs> If he hits me, I'm dead. As in, this guy is monstrous in his attack strength in when he has his hand form. Alright, we got the glitch still. Good night. <laughs> 
<laughs> the candy barrel strats. The seal of Dryad's magic has been released. Ares is gone. Good night, indeed. Voice. We can hear voices. Uh, level 6 would be rather dangerous to use. Actually, 6 might work. I don't remember which one was the whirlwind, but you don't want to use the whirlwind there. Yeah, I, I exactly, bro. I think that sounds about right. I wonder how many attacks it is. Because if it's tons of attacks and you can't just critical hit a lot with it. That would be rather fascinating. By the way, this is my favorite theme in the entire game. Fix this moment. Yeah, that would be a terrible idea. From that position on, that would have probably killed me. Hi spirits! Thank you for the host, sir. How are you doing? And if anyone does not know hi spirits... Follow that guy. He plays a lot of Dragon Quest. A lot of Dragon Quest. He is kind of crazy. To say the least. And I can recommend him. Pretty awesome guy. Actually, let me check real quick. Two barrels, two barrels, two candy. Seven. I don't need any of those. This should have restocked my supplies. Alright, let's go! More girl power! <laughs> Barrels are too strong. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play this fight really safe, which means this is going to take a while. Because I'm going to be only taking one or two slashes at most at the Mana Beast here. And I need a total of 20 hits to actually kill it. The reason why I do it like this is Lucent Beam. Mana Beast never runs out of magic. If it casts Lucent Beam on me, About four or five times in a row. I'm just straight up dead. Let me demonstrate how much damage it deals. I'm actually curious about this as well. 114. So five loose from beans in a row, and then he would come with this one from the side, this attack here. I would not survive this. And greetings, Rena Plus. Welcome. By the way, barrels are overpowered in this game. They block literally everything physical attack from any boss ever. Everything is considered physical, except spells that you can cast yourself, which Lucent Beam is among them. Ouch, that was not so great. I will try a level 3 attack here. Okay, level 3 doesn't do a whole lot. I want to heal up before anything bad happens. So the thing is, I've actually arrived here on the Mana Beast with the sprite before, solo sprite that is. And it just decided to cast four loosened beams in a row, and the sprite was straight up dead. Which was not so happy. Oh yeah, let's not have that happen anymore. Also I can cancel attack as long as I'm not charging up an attack, which 
the only way for me to damage the Barna Beast is to charge up a, well, charge the heck, surprise. Can you get charges to the candy barrel? Probably not. The thing is, I will probably need a second controller for that, to be confirmed. I mean, it would be interesting. The candy barrel is... you need to actually activate the barrel as soon as it is there. Yeah. Just activate the barrel. Okay. Here, I wait, and as soon as it casts Lucent Beam, I will be... interrupting the Lucent Beam by opening the menu and just using an item on myself. So yeah, I get in one attack per cycle. Oh, he didn't even do the thing. Okay with this. What I could try is use the candy barrel. I guess we call it candy barrel now. I could use the candy barrel to get in multiple hits, just to see whether I can land a critical hit in between, because I think critical hits should still deal damage to the Mana Beast defense. Mana Beast has something like 400 defense, we're under 50, something like that. So for me to deal any reasonable damage, I just need to charge up high enough to be able to punch through the defense. So this is what I really want to catch, so to speak. Oh, I didn't replenish candies. Oh, rip candies. Oh, that was a crit. That actually worked. Many zeros. But if I land any critical hits, that is about 200 damage. So, actually, Candy Barrel is useful. New record incoming. I mean, I think this is the first uh, boy only run which kills all bosses. So, sure, we could say that. Also, I prefer if the Mana Beast comes from above. Usually, that's a bad thing in most speedruns, but. From above, it gives me plenty of time to actually charge up the attack. Also, apparently, level 6 is better than level 5. Okay, uh, I need to check 5. 1, 0, alright. Let's see. This should not actually damage me at all. In the sense that... It works. It's fine. Can you do me a favor, and in the moment after the fly is traded, you attack your action grid for a second? The action grid? In the moment after the fly is straight at you... This one? Or afterwards? Uh, action grid. What? 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 What did he do, Crow? What is going on? This looks terrifying! <laughs> what did he do? What did you do, Crow? Nice crit. Oh my god! <laughs> what is this?
How? You found it during your original one controller routing. What? I've never seen that. <laughs> oh my god. This is terrifying. The unimaginable terror. It's fine. Is that man bear pick? Probably not. I need to actually replenish my honeys real quick. What is going on? Uh, wow. Full screen menus really mess up the mana beast, don't they? Really mess up the mana piece. <laughs> so this time it cost four loosened beams there. If I tried to charge up another attack, I would have been basically straight up dead here. Uh, saying. <laughs> Someone fix Flammy, please. <laughs> Thank you, TNAC. It's so messed up. Oh, I forgot to... Forgot to charge up. I'm not going to risk anything here. That was quite something. Thank you, Crow. <laughs> I think quite something is an understatement. Did I'm gonna count the amount of attacks though. Doing it a second time will actually make the game fix it. Oh, fascinating. How did I never figure that one out? It is the way you say the I that just makes it right. Error terrible. How many do I have left? Five. Alright. I can only use one barrel. I'm just going to do this. Candy barrel! Nice crit. Oh wow, that was three crits actually. Candy barrel is worthwhile. I really think with this candy barrel, doing the glitchless mana beast with one controller might be the way to go now. This is fascinating. So do you have infinite barrels and gem? Basically, yes. I just need to replenish them. So to give you an idea, on the far left of this arena, I'm in the perfect spot. Currently I have two barrels, you can see that at the top right. Now I go into my equipment menu, equip a armor, and then throw it away. Equip my old armor again, just for defense. And then I have zero barrels. And that's just how it works. This is so weird. Nice crit. Oh, 
That was a crit among... Nice crit. I mean, there's no reason to not just hope for crits in this case. Barrel attacks are not glitchless friendly? No, they are not. But that's why I say, use one controller strats. Uh, you get the mana sword one control. Actually, you can't do that anymore, can you? Never mind. Never mind. It would be something for all bosses, I guess. What is this candy barrel thing? For some reason... We have no idea why, I don't think. Oopsie. Whenever you... Use a healing item on a barrel, it just infinitely attacks as soon as you happen to use the barrel. Or something like that. Either way, I use a healing item and then right afterwards I use a barrel before the healing procs. And that attacks for some reason about five times in a second or so, I don't know. So here I use a royal charm on the boy. Before the royal charm actually heals, I use a barrel on the boy. And I get something like one, two, I don't know how many attacks that was. That was all stacked up on top of each other. Why did I remove the barrel? Also, I can actually attack as a barrel. Yes. Barrel attack! Boom. Yeah, what crow says? It's really odd. Let's see. Does that actually hit anything? Nope. Nice damage! Marvelous. Wait, did I? I didn't replenish the harness, did I? No, I still have to. I can't use any more. Moogle! Moogles! I accidentally forgot to... ...replenish stuff. By the way, I know barrels actually do damage when you unleash a charge attack. But I think it's so low... ...that you need to an overcharge to deal any sig any damage at all. Although it should have propped a zero on the mana beast if it actually hit. Might just be... By the way, the barrel is basically a weapon. If you use a weapon enchant on the barrel... It looks actually really strange because the barrel becomes the weapon enchant color, like blue or red or whatever, whatever you use on it. So messed up. Uh oh. This is bad. This is potentially bad. Alright. I got lucky. This could have been bad. They decided to chain in one more loosened beam in between there. I would have been probably toast. <laughs> we do while charging, does any nonsense happen? What? Uh, the thing is, it resets your charge if you equip the barrel. But maybe if you have a charge and then use a healing item then onto the barrel. Maybe then some nonsense will happen.
But yeah, as I said, I take this fight very careful and slowly right now. I've been burned before. This is the safe way to do it. Not fast, but soon. Wow. Can't use another battle now. Literally doesn't work. Yes, I actually know you can overcharge barrel AI control characters. I've done that before. And it does damage. Uh, just because. You can. Yeah. That's the most awesome border. Wait, it didn't work! I was too slow! Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Alright, I'm here. Okay. That could have been really bad. One more loose and bean and I would have been just straight up dead. At least it will heal first. That's okay. <laughs> well, sounds like a good game to start with that, Mary Ellen Cuts. Sounds like a very good game to start with that. Nah. Oh, I think it worked. Never mind. Does it mess it up always the same? Uh oh. Please don't do that. Alright, thank you. Okay, I can heal now. I should not have slashed there. <laughs> There's no real reason. No crits, unfortunately. Okay. Hey, thank you for the host. I appreciate that. Thank you for the host, Mary Ellen Cuts. Hey, how long is this pause? Maybe. Did it stay... Did it... It did look different. Different bit. I figured it would be depending on the menu. Well, it does definitely look different. Give me some crits, please. Bam! Fell down. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> Goodbye, man, I beast. Thank you. This is going to be interesting in the credits now. What? <laughs> Who threw the boomerang there? <laughs> Wait, my... Two other characters had the boomerang actually equipped. So something scared them on this side. Oh, the lady's here. You'll find your brown. What was that? Oh. 
करते हो This means you can actually fight the mana beast without the mana so Oh yeah, naturally you can. As long as your weapon has enough damage, you can do that. So let's say uh, level 8 axe, I mean level 8 charge, and level 7 charge can defeat the mana beast. Swordless secret of mana speed runs incoming. I mean... No, the battle still takes... Actually, I don't know. I assume that... No, the barrel still takes the base weapon damage from your current equipped weapon. Bark the sprite away? No, no, no. Bark him back. Mana Beast exploding. The lady is there. Lady is the Mana Beast confirmed. <laughs> what about the no weapon run? How would that work? So, I calculated that... I don't think you can defeat the mana beast with just magic. I don't think you can do that. I mean, the original strategy of 1 for 1 play 2 controller involved just using uh, the spear as an overcharge weapon, because it doesn't matter as long as you deal enough damage and punch through the mana beast defense, which weapon you use. We did it! We did it, guys. We did it. That was quite something. That was quite something. I'm curious whether the sprite is going to be there in the final cutscene or not. I just like those credits. <laughs> oh yeah, for anyone who does not know, the very last screen, if we get to see it, that is, in Seeker of Mana has different moon phases each time you play through. Well, it can have three different moon phases. Crescent moon, full moon, or a two-third moon. Which one it is, we don't know, it's random. So, pick your choice. I'm going to say this is going to be a two-third moon because this run was really weird. And the two-third moon is really weird. When you're young, all always thought the Mox Helmet was his head. I mean, I kind of saw the same. But I also had the German illustration guide, or guide illustration, which showed it actually pretty clearly that it was just a helmet. But in the game I still always saw it as a head.
He picked new moons as the new glitch will shave off 3 seconds from the world record. Wow. And we need the Happy Mask Mask here. Yes, the run is just over now. The boy did it all by himself. Which was quite the endeavor. But we defeated all the bosses. No major skips. So let's see. Normally the sprite is standing next to the tree. Actually, I'm pretty sure he's going to be standing there anyways. Because that sprite is not the sprite from your party. Was this no deaths? No, there were quite a few deaths actually. There were a few deaths on Jabberwocky. At least two, I think. Um... There was one death on the Great Viper. I think that's it, actually. Ah, the two third moon, I was right. It was three quarter for that matter. <laughs> nice crow. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, this was our journey for today. We have arrived. Well then, I thank you everybody for watching, for listening and just lurking. I appreciate all of your presence. And well, I'm going to redirect you to someone else for now. Let's see, who could I suggest for you guys to watch? Actually, on the RPG Limit Break channel, there is currently an IS series relay going on. As in all the IS games in a row. If you are interested in IS or just in channel RPGs, I recommend you check that out for now. I'm going to be over there as well for a while. Have a nice evening, everybody. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, until next time, take care, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>